Ringo ran wild last week. He had 302 all-purpose yards as Cal State Fullerton almost upset San Diego State. In Las Vegas, Darren Brightman pounded out 183 yards in only 11 carries. His play powered the Rebels to a win over conference foe New Mexico State. They're here today as a season of Big West football kicks off on Prime Ticket. Coming up, it's UNLV versus Cal State Fullerton. from Santa Ana Stadium in Santa Ana, California. The Prime Ticket Network presents the Big West Conference Game of the Week. Today, the Rebels of Nevada, Las Vegas battle the Titans of Cal State Fullerton. Hello again, everybody. I'm Jeff Witcher. We have a beautiful picture postcard Southern California day for Big West football, and we've got a good one on tap. Cal State Fullerton at home, their first conference game of 1989. They come in with a 1-2-1 record. The tie came last weekend, 41-41 against San Diego State. UNLV, they have been injury prone. A lot of uh, top rated players out of the lineup, but they have managed to win two games out of three, and one of those, a conference game last weekend against New Mexico State. Let's find out more about this afternoon's contest from my broadcasting partner, David Hum. And statistically, these two teams look about even. Well, they do, but they do it two different ways. Cal State Fullerton, they gain their yards through the air, and the Rebels are predominantly a ground game. And I think with a young quarterback in Derek Stott, I think you're going to see the Rebels on the, on the ground a lot early in this game. Talking about ground game, both the clubs have outstanding individual running backs. Cal State Fullerton led by number 27, Mike Pringle, and UNLV by Darren Brightman. You see both uh, rushing for over an average of 100 yards a game, but both backs are, are very different. Brightman is more of a power runner. You see Darren take the ball around the right side and get into the end zone against New Mexico State here. But Darren Brightman, I, you'll see him at the tailback position, and you'll also see him as a receiver today. Mike Pringle, on the other hand, Mike's a slashing type runner. They run the single back set. Here you see Mike Pringle against San Diego State. They didn't throw to him that much last week. The Rebels are a tough defensive team against the run. I think we'll see Mike Pringle in their passing game more today. Well, as you football fans know, special teams, certainly sophisticated, whether it be high school football, college football, or the National Football League, and the kicking game today could mean the difference between win or loss, and I would say Fullerton has the edge there with Phil Nevin, the sensational freshman. I think Gene Murphy's a lot more comfortable with Phil Nevin, 7 for 7 on field goals, 10 for 10 on extra points, and only a freshman. He's their punter, but he's been sick all week and really hasn't had his uniform on since last Saturday against San Diego State. In fact, when he comes out today to kick, whether it be a PAT or a field goal, it will be the first time that he has kicked a ball since he kicked that 22-yard field goal that put a tie on the board for Cal State Fullerton. That's going to be interesting. It is, and for a freshman, you like to get the, the repetitions, and there's a lot of pressure on him. It's a conference game, so he's going to have the jitters a little bit early. Should be an exciting ball game. Glad you could join us here at Santa Ana Stadium in Santa Ana, California. Coming up, the kickoff, UNLV against Cal State Fullerton, stay with us. I'm Back out here at Santa Ana Stadium in Santa Ana, California, our Big West Game of the Week. Cal State Fullerton's head coach, Gene Murphy, in his 10th season at the helm. Interestingly enough, the tie last weekend against San Diego State, 41-41, was the first tie of his coaching career. This is his 12th year as a head coach. On the other side of the field, in his fourth season at the helm of his alma mater, Wayne Nunley. It was 17 years ago that he was their fullback, and David Hum, he was a good one. Well, he was a good player, and he was also an assistant coach under Gene Murphy, so there's a friendship there. Two different coaches, Murphy a little more uh, secure and stable here, here at Fullerton, and Wayne Nunley's got some problems with UNLV. We have a beautiful day here in Southern California for football. The temperature is 77 degrees, a 17 mile per hour wind out of the southwest humidity 30 percent and it is just beautiful the flip of the coin won by cal state fullerton so luis salario will kick off for unlv mike pringle the deep man for the titans he has two long returns this season one of 59 and one of 55 he averages 26 yards a return 
Solerio, who also does the field goal kicking and PAT kicking, he's had problems in that area, but he is a strong kickoff man. He usually gets it down within the 10 and most of the time within the five yard line. Jack Gatto is our referee today. This has been the home of the Titans for the last six years in a row. It was dedicated in April of 1932. People around here know it as the Santa Ana Bull. We're underway. It's taken by an up back who gets it out to the 35-yard line. Jeff, even though Mike Pringle didn't touch the ball, that shows you the importance of having a guy back there that's so dangerous. The Rebels were afraid to kick to him, tried to squib it. Here the Fullerton Titans have great field position to throw him 35. Todd Baird was the ball carrier. Dan Speltz, the quarterback for the Titans, 6'3", 200-pounder. They bring it out to the 35-yard line in pretty good field position to open up the game. And they have three wide receivers to the right side. Pringle, the lone remaining back. Spelts to throw, and he hits Rocky Palomera at the 40-yard line, and he goes down there. Jody Reinel made the stop. So Palomera, keep an eye on him. Hill and Celeste and the other wideouts, Pringle the running back, Brennan the tight end. The offensive line for Cal State Fullerton, keep an eye on Reggie Redding, Gang, Leitutufu, Hauser, and Illingworth rounded out. Second down from the 41-yard uh, line. Trips left this time. Spelts again to throw. Swings it to Pringle. He's got some running room midfield, and he is brought down at the 47-yard line. Freddie Phillips made the stop for UNLV. Defensively for the Rebels up front. Watch Doc Wise coming off a great performance last weekend, 18 tackles. Nicholson and Christian on either side of him. The linebackers anchored by Joe Zachariah, Miller, Foster, and Reinel also there. And in the defensive secondary, you have a great defensive secondary. Freddie Phillips, Carlton Johnson, Gerald Robinson, and Don Odegaard. First down in UNLV territory for the Titans. Feltz stays to the air, swings it out to Pringle, trying to get outside, cuts it back inside. A great run by Pringle. He's to the 30, he's to the races. 10, 5, touchdown, Cal State Fullerton. The Fullerton fans love it. Quick start by Cal State Fullerton, a 47-yard touchdown romp for Mike Pringle. That gives him six touchdowns on the young season. They ran this play to the left and come right back to the right. Watch Mike Kringle make Jody Reinhold, who had 18 tackles last week against New Mexico State, completely miss him. Cuts back against the flow of the defense and makes the big play. But those first two plays, you can see the Titans philosophy. It's kind of the, the ball control pass offense to get your best runner the ball. That's Mike Pringle. Phil Nevin, the sensational freshman kicker, his first attempt since last weekend's 22-yard field goal. Bad case of the flu. He's still perfect. 11 for 11, PAT-wise. And we've got a timeout. And the score, Cal State Fullerton 7, UNLV nothing. So Fullerton scores first, and they lead at 7-0, 13-32 remaining here in the first quarter in Santa Ana, California. So Phil Nevin set to kick off for the Cal State Fullerton Titans. Nevin out of Placentia. And Darren Brightman, the return man for UNLV. Brightman averages almost 19 yards a return. Brightman from the 15 up to the 20, 25, and he is tripped up at the 28-yard line by Dion Thomas of Fullerton, a 14-yard return for Darren Brightman. So the sophomore, Derek Stott, out of Cerritos, California, the quarterback, playing for the injured Chuck Price. Stott 
Dodd is 12 of 31 through the air for 129 yards and one touchdown. That was a 32-yard touchdown strike to Keenan McCardle. Kyle Toomer, the lone remaining back, and he gets the handoff, and he picks up two or three yards to the 31-yard line. UNLV in that backfield. Toomer, keep an eye on him. He is a fine young runner. Reitman, the tailback. Wills at split in. McCardle and Welch rounded out. Reitman is back there with Toomer. And it is complete to McCardle. And he's brought down at the 34-yard line. Defensively, keep an eye on Greg uh, Mattis, the strong tackle, Williams, Perez, Jones, and Jensen, the uh, offensive line. Third down and four for UNLV from their own 35-yard line. Stock to throw, and it's incomplete, intended for Ricky Wills, and he just uh, overshot him. That time you could see Derek Stott just rush that pass. He barely had his head around to take a look at his receiver before he threw the ball. Third down and, and three. That's a tough situation for a young sophomore with his very first start. But everything we hear about this kid as far as his presence and his leadership that he's going to be a good quarterback. Punting situation for UNLV. They've got the best punter in the conference, Tony Rines. He's averaging 43 and a half. Nugent Pendleton, number 22, deep for Cal State Fullerton. And it's a fake, a fake punt, and running with the ball is one of the up people for UNLV. So they tried the fake punt, and Jody Reinel ran with the ball for UNLV. Some razzle-dazzle early in this Big West opener for Cal State Fullerton. Well, and not a bad call by Wayne Nunley. The, the thing is, he'll send in the fake punt, but then it's up to the fullback to audibleize or keep it on, and apparently he, they saw the defense that they could run it against, but a good play by the Titan defense. So the Titans able to hold, and they've got great field position as they take over at the 36-yard line. Mike Pringle, the lone remaining back. Trip receivers left side, spelt with great protection, firing over the middle, and Tony Dill could not hold on. Incomplete at the 15-yard line. Don Odegaard covering on the play for UNLV. Tony Dill out of San Diego, 5'11", 190-pound senior, had it for a moment and then just could not hold on. It was a, a loose potato for him, David. And a good throw by Dan Spelt. Dan Spelt should really have no balls on the ground yet. There, Dill had a chance to catch it right in his hands. That's something that they work on the passing game so much. You'd think that uh, these receivers would come up with a ball like that. Spelt has put up outstanding numbers so far in 1989. again to throw. Rocky Palomero has it. 25. Cuts back inside. Fumbles a football. UNLV recovers at their own 22-yard line. And the man who recovered it, Carlton Johnson, the sophomore from Las Vegas, 5'9", 180-pounder. He's the hero of the moment for the Rebels. Almost a pick here, and you'll watch this short, high-percentage completion to Palomara. But watch Carlton. He'll run by Palomara. He'll try to get back inside of him. Watch if his left hand just knocked the ball out. Does a good job of falling on it. And a big break after that turnover by the Rebels. So UNLV has the football back at the 22-yard line as Carlton Johnson recovers it. He really knocked it out of the hand of Palomara. So Johnson did a great job. Nice individual effort. Stott at quarterback. Reitman, the lone remaining back. He gets the pitch, trying to get outside. Cuts it back in, and he gets out to the 24-yard line. Harold Jones brought him down for Fullerton. Up front for the Titans, John Bavaro having a nice senior year. He's the nose tackle. On either side of him, Clarence Seiler and Dave Dort. The linebacking core for the Titans, Russ O'Lear. He's their main man. Harold Jones, Forrest Dahl, and Dennis rounded out. And in the secondary, keep an eye on Schaffel, Wright, Pendleton, and Tramble round out the defensive backs for the Titans. Stock, he can run with it. And he does a nice job. He gets it out 
close to the 34-yard line. Stott, a very mobile quarterback, has a strong arm, but he's one of the fastest UNLV Rebels. Well, and he did a good job. He got the first down there. He took a pretty good hit from Sean Dennison. A lot of times when you're young and you're getting your first playing experience, the butterflies are with you all the time until really that very first hit. And there, Stott took a pretty good one. First down for UNLV at the 34-yard line. Eastman gets the call. Didn't see anything up the middle. Tried to get outside and he was brought down as he tried to turn the corner by Harold Jones. Jones, the strong side linebacker, he's a senior out of San Diego. This play is designed to go up the middle. You can see him trying to go between the guard and tackle, but Eastman will bounce this out. Good tackle by Harold Jones. Eastman, really nobody knew a lot about him until Tommy Jackson went down, had a great game last week. Ken Rogers in at the tight end position for Robert Welch. Second down for UNLV, 7-0 Fullerton. We're in play first quarter here at the Santa Ana Bowl. Brightman in motion over the middle, and it's dropped. Ken Rogers should have held on to that football, and he was unable to catch it. Well, Ken Rogers, watch it, him signal for the ball as soon as he breaks the line. He'll raise his arm right there where he should have just been waiting for the pass. He takes his eyes off. Mike Schappel is a big hitter, number 41. You see him try to take the frustration out on Schappel, but I'm sure watching Mike Schappel in the films, he was in the back of his mind. Third down for UNLV. They're 0-1 in third down conversions today. 7-0, Cal State Fullerton. First quarter of action. I'm Jeff Witcher along with David Hong. Hope you're enjoying Big West College football here on Prime Ticket. Welch in motion. Scott to throw. Good protection. Now he's going to run with the ball. Harold Jones chases him. Harold Jones gets help from Forrestal, and they bring him down at the 30-yard line. So a nice job of protection, but the defensive backs did great jobs covering, and he had to run with it, and he had to eat the football. And remember, there's four new offensive linemen on that Rebel offensive line, so Wayne Nunley's got to feel good about here, but here, Harold Jones makes a great rush and keeps after the quarterback. Tough series for Derek Stott. Fourth down for UNLV this time. Rhines does punt the ball, a beautiful spiral. Pendleton lets it drop, and it takes a UNLV bounce, and it's inside the 20, down at the 19-yard line, out of bounds. We'll take a timeout and be back to Santa Ana. Right now, it's 7-0, Cal State Fullerton. up next the Arizona Wildcats will be on the prowl in Eugene and it'll be the Oregon Ducks who will fill out the bill it'll all happen right here on prime ticket after this one the world's largest regional sports network nine minutes and 29 seconds remaining here in the first quarter it's seven nothing Cal State Fullerton the Titan cheerleaders happy about things and the Titans have the football first and 10 at their own 19-yard line. And Speltz at quarterback. Pringle, the lone remaining back. Alamara, Hill, and Celestine trips left. Swings it to Pringle. Nice one-handed catch. Turns the corner, 25, and he is shoved out of bounds at the 29-yard line. Don Odegaard, the left-side quarterback, pushed him out of bounds. Odegaard got Pringle. Mike Pringle, three consecutive 100-yard games. He is outstanding. Well, here, and this is just a long handoff. It's the fourth time we've seen the Titans run this. Your best player, get him the ball as much as you can. Here you see him out, outrun Gerald Robinson to the outside. This guy is really exciting. And when, uh, Gene Murphy said he's the most intense guy on his team. Pringle so far, 69 yards on three catches and one touchdown. 5'10", 185-pound senior. Second down for the Titans. Speltz getting rushed. Fires to Palomero, who makes a nice catch, and he runs out at the 41-yard line. Don Odegaard again was there for UNLV. Dan Speltz right on target. And Rocky Palomero doing a great job at wideout for Gene Murphy's club. He's climbing the all-time Titan charts. Third all-time with 78 catches. 
just three away from tying Roy Lewis for the number two spot. First down for Cal State Fullerton at the 41-yard line. Spelt stays in the air, firing for Hill, and Hill can't hold on at the UNLV 40-yard line. Don Odegaard, a transfer from Oregon State, covering on the play. He sat out last year. He had a problem with the Oregon State coaches and then transferred. You will be glad he did. Gene Murphy real happy with the maturity of Dan Speltz. You see the rush on Speltz. The ball is a little bit underthrown. Odegaard does a good job of reacting, but still a catchable ball there, a ball that the defender or the, the, the offensive player usually has the advantage. There's Odegaard, spelled six of eight for 100 yards and one touchdown. Balls on the 41-yard line, second down and 10 for the Titans. They lead it 7-0, first quarter. Palomero, great catch, still on his feet. He's going to go all the way. Touchdown, Cal State Fullerton. Pride of Sunland, California, the senior, 6'2", 190 pounder, his third touchdown catch of 1989. What a fun offense for a quarterback to play in three wide outs all the time. A great throw. See the concentration of Palomar reach out for the ball. He's got good speed. He runs away from Carlton Johnson. But what a great offense. They can do so much throwing the ball underneath. They've got Pringle out on the little flare and screen pass. And then a receiver like Palomera. Dan Speltz has to feel real comfortable out there. Rocky now two away from number two all time. And he'll kneel and rest and hold for Phil Nevin and the PAT. Nevin continues to be perfect 12 of 12 this season. And we've got a timeout, so we're going to take one more look at a beautifully executed touchdown pass play as the fans having some fun, at least the Fullerton side. The Titans early in the, in the quarter here have thrown the short outs, the short slants, and the screens to Pringle. Here they just run all the receivers deep. Rocky Palomaro right up the middle, no free safety there to pick him up. Carlton Johnson all by himself. Well, there is one of the reasons that Palomera averages 15 yards a catch for Cal State Fullerton. Well, and this offense is real similar to the one that the Houston Cougars. This is more like the jog and shoot because you know Dan Speltz is not going to run the ball. He's a pocket guy, but he's got such a good feel of reading the defense, and so he's so comfortable with this offense, and there's so many things that he can do, especially with the Mike Pringle in his backfield. So Gene Murphy, delighted about the way the first quarter has unfolded thus far as his club leads it. 14 to nothing. However, should be pointed out that UNLV, both victories that they have this season have been coming behind win. But they've also been against Weber State and against New Mexico State that probably are not as strong a team as this Fullerton team is. Evans kick. Dropped by Brightman. He has to go back and get it. And he gets out to the 17-yard line. Clarence Seiler made the tackle for Cal State Fullerton. Wayne Nunley, the head coach of UNLV, on the left of your screen. Trying to find out what his defense is doing and what they can do to counteract Dan Speltz in his passing offense. Not even a contest, total yards wise so far, 159 for Fullerton, just 14 for UNLV. Titan defense really shutting down the Rebels offense. Keenan McCardle in motion near side. Lightman is the ball carrier, he crosses the 20, gets it out close to the 21 yard line. Sean Forrestal, the first man to hit him for Cal State Fullerton. Forrestal, a senior out of San Diego, California. Brightman. Also out of San Diego, 5'10", 200-pounder. Jeff, remember, though, in this Rebel offensive line, it's hard for them to do dominate the run with Joe Baritz, Dustin Quinton, Tim Lyons out. Pat Harden will be back today, but he's not in there right now. That's right. They lost uh, all four, three to injuries, and Pat Harden suspended for failing a drug test. He was eligible Tuesday, and he will play today. Stop firing. It's almost picked off by Nugent Pendleton. And he had a touchdown, nobody in front of him, but he was unable to hold on. Pendleton does a great job of breaking on the ball. This is a ball the quarterback has to throw low and outside. You see a little bit of air under this ball. Pendleton 
almost picks this off, that would have been a tough break, not only for the Rebels, but for the confidence of this young quarterback, Derek Stott. The intended receiver was Andre Guidry. And Pendleton, he's upset. He knew he had six points. Third down for UNLV. Tumor and Brightman. Scott in trouble. He goes down. He is sacked by Seiler and Dave Dorf of Cal State Fullerton. That is the second sack of the game for the Titans. Well, the Titans had a little game going on there with their defensive line, and Dave Dorf did a good job getting outside. He puts the pressure on Stott early, and then Clarence Seiler just finishes him off, him off with a tough start for a young quarterback. Ryan's in the end zone. High snap. He's got to chase it down. He gets away from Darrell Bruce, and he's going to run it back. He's to the 10, and he laterals it. And it is recovered by UNLV at the 14-yard line. So it's been that kind of a start for UNLV. Nothing going right. And this just has to kill Wayne Nunley when you've got a veteran punter back there who catches the ball probably every day as much as a wide receiver. Not a very bad snap right at his eye level. Gets through his hands. Really, he, he gets away from giving up the safety, but now the way this offense for the Titans is running, it's just inevitable that they get at least three out of this with a kicker um, like Nevin. A little over seven minutes to play, first quarter, 14-0, Cal State Fullerton, and they're in great field position to put more points on the board. Dan Speltz all the way at quarterback, Pringle up the middle, and he makes a great second effort, and he dives inside the UNLV 10-yard line. Mike Pringle. Wayne Nunley, not happy at all, and you can't blame him. Of course, he's had injuries to his number one quarterback, Price, his number one running back, uh, Tommy Jackson, uh, Charles Anthony, one of his top D-backs is out, a whole new offensive line. Actually, they've done pretty well considering. Second down for the Titans. Celestine, Hill, Palomera to the left side. Pringle trying to go right, and he is game tackled back at the... 13-yard line. Ray Roundtree, along with Doc Wise, in on the stop for UNLV, who looked real good on that play defensively. Well, the counter gap, and they, and they run this so well. They were so effective last week against San Diego State. But there you can see number 38, Joe Zachariah, in to put at least a hit on Pringle. But you see the strength and determination of this running back. Third down. And five for Cal State Fullerton. And the rush is on. Freddie Phillips sacks Dan Speltz. Great play by Freddie Phillips, the senior out of Santa Maria, California. A lot of times on a safety blitz like this, there's a side adjust where the receivers have to recognize the blitz there. Speltz, none of his receivers reacted to this blitz. Freddie Phillips, an extremely intelligent player. He's a jack of all trades. He can play every defensive position. And Phil Nevin is in to attempt a field goal. He is 7 for 7 is long this year, 54 yards. This will be a 36-yard attempt. It's good. Phil Nevin, Mr. Automatic, does it again. 8 for 8. And it's now Cal State Fullerton, 17. UNLV, nothing. Back after these messages. A frustrated Wayne Nunley watching as his team is down by 17 points here in the first quarter. Titans ready to kick off. A little over five minutes left, first quarter. That is Brightman. He crosses the 25, gets it out to the 26-yard line. Lionel Denman made the stop for Cal State Fullerton. Cal State Fullerton has just dominated 155 total yards to just 19 for the Rebels. A lot of times when you've got a young quarterback, you try to throw the short, high percentage passes. I think what they need to do is let Derek Stott air this ball out a little bit so that Titan defense just can't sit in their regular defense and take out the underneath things. Aaron Brightman, Marvin Eastman in at the running backs. Wills is wide left. 
Keenan McArdle wide right. Eastman gets the call up the middle, and he gets it out close to the 29-yard line. It's brought down by Mike Schappel, the senior from Whittier, California, who came into today's ball game with 26 tackles. He is a ferocious hitter. Eastman, taking over for the injured Jackson last weekend, came through with a 125-yard performance. And that was uh, in less than an entire game. Well, and Darren Brightman, Eastman, and Toomer are all going to have to run well to try to take some pressure off this young redshirt sophomore quarterback. Second down for UNLV. Rolling left is Scott. Fires to Brightman out of the backfield, and he gets it out to the 32-yard line before he's knocked out of bounds. Brightman in his fourth year on the team, his second as a starter. Sean Forrestal does a good job defensively for Fullerton, 6'2", 212-pound senior. That was one of the things that Wayne Nunley wanted to do with this young quarterback was sprint him out so for an, uh, an inexperienced offensive line would not have to worry about picking up the stunts. We'll probably see uh, Stott do that quite a bit this afternoon. Third and five for UNLV. From the 32-yard line. Play action. Scott almost falls down. He's being rushed. Scrambling, and he gets away. And finally is hit and dropped by Chris Wright. A ferocious hit at the 30-yard line. Nice job by UNLV's Scott. He uh, avoided quite a few tackles, David Hum. Well, he makes a great effort, and he shows you what kind of athlete he is. This kid, he's got so much determination during the summer. There he makes Jones miss. During the summer, he was just another guy, third guy running the scout team, and here he is starting against the Titans. But you see the effort. Now watch the hit that Wright puts on him. Stretched out. That's why those flak jackets are so good. That is the third sack for the Titan defense. Rines punts it away. Pendleton fumbles the football and recovers it at the 24-yard line. Nugent Pendleton trying to pick it up and run. Sometimes a return man can get a great return on a punt like that, but that time he almost fumbled the football. Well, he didn't, and it would have given the Rebels great field position. A lot of times when you're down 17 to nothing, you're really not in a game. You need a play to get you going, and there a, a recovery by the Rebels would have really helped Wayne Nunley. You see Wayne. Dan Speltz having an outstanding afternoon, 7 of 9, 159 yards and two touchdowns. Titans first and 10 at their own 24-yard line. Pringle, the lone remaining back, trip receivers left. Speltz rushed and it's patted down. I believe it was Avery Miller who batted the ball down. Avery Miller, the whip position or outside linebacker for UNLV, wears number 39. And he just leaped up like a basketball player and slapped it down. This time, Mike Pringle did not cut him. He went in too high, and it, it let Miller get up and keep his hands up. Good play by him. Three minutes and 48 seconds remaining. First quarter, 17-0. Cal State Fullerton. They have dominated the first quarter of action. Alamera, Hill, and Tony Dill all on the left side, receiver-wise. Pringle hits the hole, breaks the tackle, and he gets out to the 31-yard line. Freddie Phillips came up to make the stop from his strong safety position. Mike Pringle built so low to the ground at 5'9". When you're a linebacker, Jody Reinhold took him right on, and he ran right through the tackle of Reinhold. Reinhold probably one of their best defensive players after Doc Wise, but there you see the statistics. He leads the conference in rushing. He is second in the nation in all-purpose yardage. He dropped down to second after leading the nation with a 3-0-2 day. Spelt under pressure. Nicholson with great pursuit. Nicholson out of Upland, California, just would never say die and finally got his man, Dan Speltz. Nicholson reminds me of Greg Townsend from the Raiders. He's in between a linebacker and a defensive lineman as far as size. Here you see the speed. He's got Dan Speltz. Really doesn't have a lot of speed for a quarterback, and I know uh, Coach Murphy doesn't like to see Speltz run the ball. Nice play defensively by Nicholson. It brings up a punting situation. Phil Nagin in there for Cal State Fullerton. Ricky Wills, a deep man, and 
Hamlin has it go off the side of his foot. He shanks it. So UNLV is going to be in great field position. Remember, Nevin did not practice all week. This snap's a little bit high. Watch, he has to go up and get it, but he still has time to get rid of the ball. Good protection by the, the tight offensive line. You see the frustration on him. He's, he's, a, he's a great kicker and only a freshman. Gene Murphy's got to feel great about having that kicker back there. And Nevin is a perfectionist, so you can bet he's unhappy. But again, he had a bad case of the flu, didn't practice all week. First time he's put the foot into the ball since last uh, weekend when he booted that 22-yard field goal to tie it at 41-41 at Jack Murphy Stadium in San Diego was today. And Gene Murphy said he was still sick this morning, so and it's hot down on the field, and you know he's probably pretty well dehydrated. Okay, UNLV in great shape field position-wise at the Titan 42-yard line. Out of the I formation. Brightman and Marvin Eastman. Eastman gets the call. And he gets out to the 38-yard line, brought down by Seiler, helped out by Dave Dorff. Dorf out of Covina, California, 6'4", 260-pound junior. Well, that defensive line can basically just sit in there, take care of their lanes when they know that the, your opposing offense is just going to run the dive plays. You might look at the Rebels to try to throw some play-action pass or maybe sprint out and try to get Derek Stott some time. Stott has Wills wide left, Keenan McCardle wide right. Welch in the slot right, split backs behind Stott. Second down. Stott fires to McCardle. McCardle trying to get by Nugent Pendleton and does, and he gets it out to the 22-23 yard line. Push out of bounds by strong safety, Chris Wright of Cal State Fullerton. The top receiver on the ball club, Keenan McCardle. And you see why on this play. Well, in a good individual play by Keenan McCardle, watch him make Pendleton miss. That's what they need to do. They need a player to step to the front right now, make a big play, and get them back in the game. Get some momentum going to their offense. One minute, 38 seconds left. First quarter. McCardle has won the touchdown catch. Out of a dozen. 17 nothing. Cal State Fullerton. UNLV trying to put some points on the board. Inside the 20 yard line. Dave Dorf, along with help on the uh, Titans defense, bringing him down. UNLV and their cheerleaders. And I'm sure Wayne Nunley would like to get this ball in the end zone with the problems they've been having with their field goal team. A little over a minute remaining first quarter. Second down for UNLV at the Titan 19 yard line. Kyle Toomer, the ball carrier, and he powers his way down to the 15 yard line. John Bavaro and Dave Dorf combined on the stop for the Titans. Toomer did a good job there of breaking the tackle of Dave Dorf. Dorf had him wrapped up and he got a couple additional yards. The best drive for the Rebels, they need to come away with points here. Gene Murphy, one of the nicest people in the coaching profession you can find. Time running out here in the first quarter, under at 30 seconds to play. 0 for 4 on third down conversion. Whiteman and Marvin Eastman in the backfield behind Scott. On play action, Scott rolling right under pressure. O'Leary is after him, and he lofts it the other way. It's intercepted by Terry Tramble at the four-yard line. Terry Tramble, the junior out of Los Angeles, intercepts another one, his third interception of the season. Well, and there's a sophomore mistake, a young quarterback that's trying to make things happen. It's his first start. But this is where you just, if you cannot get the first down, if you can't get the ball in the end zone, you just want to throw it away. Here he throws across his body. See how high the ball, ball gets caught up in the wind. Tramble, an easy pick, just a jump ball. But there, that, that interception and that mistake on Derek Stott and his inexperience, you can see Tramble again go up, make a good play. There he turns into the receiver, but the Rebels come away with no points, and that, that kills any kind of momentum they had with that drive. Nice play by Terry Tramble, and it comes with just two seconds remaining here in the first quarter. Burns in the backfield. Pringle, the ball carrier, trying to get outside. Breaks one tackle, breaks another. And he's... 
fumbles the ball, but was it after the hit? If it, if it was on the ground, and they say it was, the Titans keep the football out at the 21-yard line, and the gun has sounded, ending the first quarter of play. So the Titans hold on to the football. They'll have it when we come back for the start of the second quarter. Fullerton leading 17-0. This Wednesday at Santa Anita, Oak Tree opens its 21st season of thoroughbred racing, and you can be a winner before the first race is ever run. Come out on opening day and receive free a collector's edition Stein, commemorating Oak Tree's five leading jockeys, including Chris McCarran, Lafitte Pinkai, and the legendary Bill Shoemaker. So here's to opening day and to being a winner at Santa Anita. This Wednesday, opening day of Oak Tree at Santa Anita. For over a year now, you've seen ads for a fantastic product called Stainmaster Carpet. Now, if you're even considering new carpet, Carpet Man puts it within your budget. Carpet Man now has DuPont certified Stainmaster Carpet made by Evans & Black, a division of Armstrong, for a special TV price of $8.49 per square yard. Not $14.99, $8.49 per square yard. So come by and see us at our San Bernardino store on E Street below Orange Show Road or call 888-1487. Nobody beats the Carpet Man. GTE, we're always looking for trouble. Our 24-hour trouble analysis center constantly monitors your phone lines, looking for problems. If we find one, we can fix it quickly, whether it's a small one or a larger one. You see, at GTE, it's not just communications we offer, it's solutions. Prime Tickets Big West Game of the Week is brought to you by Toyota. Whatever car or truck you choose, you'll love the quality. Who could ask for anything more? And by Great Western's family of companies with over $35 billion in assets. 100 years strong, Great Western will always be there. It shows you the value of a Mike Pringle. The Titans inside their four-yard line, the strength of that Rebel defense is their rush defense with Doc Wise and Jody Reinhold in the middle. Mike Pringle brings them out and gets them outside the 20-yard line. Trips right for the Titans. Dan Speltz, who's had an outstanding afternoon, starts the second quarter with the football. A quick one to Palomera, trying to get outside. He crosses the 30, and he leaps forward to the 34-yard line. Brought down by Mark Walker, who backs up Gerald Robinson at the right quarterback position. And Palomera shows the great value that he has to this Titan offense. And, and you don't know that that wasn't an audible or a side adjustment, that there was no rebel up in Palomar, on, on Palomara. Spells just reached up and just threw the ball real quick. Palomara, five catches, 103 yards, and one touchdown. That's a pretty good game for a lot of guys. Tony Dill in the game, wide left, up the middle, Pringle. Runs into Joe Zachariah. Zachariah, the junior, 6'1", 230 pounds. Pringle, 5'10", 185. So, Speltz of Fullerton, 7 for 9, 159 yards, a couple of TDs. Palomera with a great ball game, 4 catches, 91 yards. He has bettered that already. And the total yards picture, 176 for Fullerton, just 44 to UNLV. And once again, the Rebels playing catch-up here in 1989. <laughs> Second down and six for Cal State Fullerton. The ball is at the 37-yard line. Burns in the backfield. Spelt throws Hill wide open. Makes a nice move inside and really is hit at the 49-yard line by Freddie Phillips. Woo! Talk about have your bell run. Watch the hit by Freddie Phillips. Dill does a good job. Spelt reads it, gets him the ball. He cuts back across the grain. He'll make Carlton Johnson miss, but watch this hit by Freddie Phillips. Can you remember the, who hit you the hardest in your career? Well, Richard Dent, he's still sore from the hit he put on me, but, and that's, that's one of those ones where Bill never saw Phillips coming. Freddie Phillips, ferocious. 
Pringle is getting a rest. Burns in the backfield. Spelts again to throw. Jill open again. And he's out to the 39-yard line. Brought down there by Gerald Robinson, who upended him. Robinson, out of Long Beach, California, a senior, 5'11", 185. Jeff, the great thing about this offense, they have three wide receivers to the same side of the field. When Dan Speltz drops back, his first look is usually deep, and if no one's open, he can come to his underneath or shorter or, or shorter receiver. So he's always got he's got more than one option, and you can see Dan Speltz is a guy that doesn't lock on to one guy. Speltz, again, with a great percentage completion-wise, under 13 minutes to play, first half. All Fullerton thus far. Nice catch by Calamara, and he is finally brought down at the 26-yard line by Freddie Phillips and Carlton Johnson. That time, the two outside receivers cleared the defensive uh, backs out. Just a little short out by Rocky Palomara. Good catch by him. Palomara, it's kind of like a Freddie Blitnikoff. Always catches everything in his hands, even things around his body, and just a super receiver. Good speed, too. Another first down for the Titans. Hand off to Pringle, room up the middle. Trying to get away from Tony Dilly, and Dilly says, oh no you don't, Pringle, I'm gonna put you down, and he does at the 15-yard line. Tony Dilly, a junior from Chino, California. He transferred to UNLV from Citrus Junior College, and he uh, finally was able to bring Mike Pringle down, and that's no easy task. Well, and that's the counter trap. Tom Gang, his right, right tackle, was pulling, and Pringle gave his offensive lineman a chance to make the break and broke back behind a good play. First down for the Titans at the UNLV, 15-yard line. 17-0, Fullerton leading, spelts to throw, and it's almost picked off by Joe Zachariah. He got his hand on it and almost ended up with an interception. The Titans have been running the quick out with Rocky Palomara. There he runs the out and comes back in. Zachariah, you can see his hands, the heavily taped hands and the pads he's got, makes it tough. Watch Zachariah get his left hand on it. But remember, receivers don't spend a lot of time in, in pass-catching drills. Zachariah came into this game with 14 tackles, and he had 10 of those last weekend in a fine performance against New Mexico State. Second and 10 for Fullerton. Pringle gets the call, trying to get outside, and he is ankle-tackled by Jody Rhino. Rhino, who also had a great game defensively last weekend, 18 tackles. Rhino made the play. Rhino last year was second team all Big West. He is really the catalyst of the Rebels defense. So the Titans getting ready now for their 10th offensive play of this drive, the longest this afternoon thus far. And remember, the Rebel defense has been on the field most of this day. It's, it's a little hotter down in the field up here on top of the press box the, the, the breeze cools things down but it's pretty hot down there mark hauser shaken up the center for cal state fullerton and we have a timeout called here in santa Ana. a little over 11 minutes to play until halftime our score cal state fullerton 17 unlv nothing We have 11 minutes and 24 seconds remaining first half. It's been all Cal State Fullerton. They lead UNLV's Rebels 17 nothing. Third and 10 for Fullerton at the UNLV 15-yard line. Pringle, the lone remaining back, spelts to throw, getting rushed. Mark Walker almost picked it off, and then Palomera almost caught it in the end zone. Walker may have jumped a little too soon. Well, this time, Dan Speltz throws off of his back foot. You can see he, he has nothing on the ball. The ball's lofted right there, right off the face of number 17, Tony Dilly. Dilly had a chance there, 14. Mark Walker, the blur drill for Tony Dilly, but would have been a big play for the Rebels. Well, Mr. Automatic into the game, Bill Nevin, the freshman, trying another field goal. This will be a 32-yard attempt. It's a chip shot for Nevin. Alamara, the holder. It's good. Bill Nevin does it again. And it's now Cal State Fullerton, 20. UNLV, nothing. We'll be back to Santa Ana, California, right after this. 
Later tonight, the Aggies of the University of New Mexico head for the islands where they'll be chasing the rainbows of Hawaii. Live coverage of this volcanic matchup begins at 10.30 right here on Prime Ticket, the world's largest regional sports network. the afternoon. Bill Nevin ready to kick it off. Aaron Reitman and Marvin Easton, the two deep men. Reitman will put a knee down into the end zone, a touchback for UNLV. apparently got hit by one of the Rebels and was unhappy about it, wanted a penalty flag and did not get it. Fullerton leading UNLV 20-0 here in the second quarter. Notre Dame, number one in the nation, crushed Purdue 40-7. 7-0, Nebraska leading Pac-10, Oregon State, third quarter. Or second quarter, rather, 11-0, Tennessee leading number four, Auburn. That's in the second quarter of play. UNLV on the 20, first and 10. Derek Stott hands off to Brighton. And Darren gets it out to the 23-yard line. Sean Forrestal made the stop for Cal State Fullerton. Jeff, I know the Rebels are trying to protect Derek Stott, but to run on first down every single series really puts your offense in a tough position if you don't gain five or six or seven yards and you've got a young, inexperienced quarterback there. And I know Rodney Bell, the offensive coordinator, has some problems with what he can do because of the experience of his offensive line. Split backs behind Stott on the second down and a long seven or a short eight. Stop to throw, fires to McCardle, and he is brought down immediately by Nugent Pendleton at the 30-yard line. Got some other scores from around the nation for you in college football. 1989, 38 to 7, Michigan leading Maryland in the fourth quarter. Elsewhere, 21-17, Duke knocked off Clemson. Oklahoma leading Kansas 17 to 6 in the third quarter. Having problems finding a quarterback. Derek Stott, the sophomore from Cerritos, California. Third down for UNLV. Power formation, three backs. Eastman gets the call, fighting his way up close to the 32-yard line. He was brought down by Harold Jones of Cal State Fullerton. Watch Harold Jones take on Pat Harden, number 64. He does a great job on the bottom of your screen. Power ride, two backs up in front. See Harold Jones there. Pat Harden was blocking him. Did a great job. Still a first down for the Rebels, but Harold Jones having a great game. The defensive coordinator for Fullerton, Kirk Harmon, says of Jones, he can be as good as he wants to be. He has all the tools, no doubt about it. First down for UNLV. Schumer and Eastman, the running backs, and Eastman gets the pitch. Eastman, running well, gets it out to the 35-yard line. Mike Schaffel made the tackle for the Titans. Again, only a three-yard pickup on first down, and we haven't seen the Rebels go deep and try to stretch this Titan defense. The, the Titans really haven't blitzed Derek Scott. They've just played in their basic zone defense and just let their linebackers just play their, their lanes and they need to get deep and they need to stretch this defense. Second down, six for UNLV. They stay on the ground, that's Brightman trying to get outside and he's out to the 41 yard line. We've got a penalty flag back at the 35 so hold everything. The Rebels had five holding penalties last week against New Mexico State. We've got one right now. And a, a lot of times when you've got a young offensive line, they're trying to do their best, but a lot of times they get a little over-aggressive. They get their hands out and grab that defender. Okay, Chad, let's go 10 from here. From the line of scrimmage, huh? Yeah. 
Yeah, right where they snap from, Chad. Go ten. That's uh, Jack Gatto, the referee. Holding on the offense. Repeat second down. Wayne Nunley, it's been a long afternoon, and we're not even uh, at halftime yet with 8.37 remaining here in the second quarter. That was the first penalty flag of this ball game, if you're keeping track of things like that. But it was also during a time when the Rebels were picking up some good yardage and really had a little bit of a drive going, now second and very long. McCardle wide right, Wills in the slot to the right side, Welts the tight end on the left side. Stop to throw, swings it out to Brightman. And Brightman crosses the 30. He gets it out to the 33-yard line. Darren Brightman has been held rushing-wise under 20 yards. He had an under 183 last week. Darren Brightman only 5'10", but a good pass receiver. You see the vision he's looking, trying to cut back against the grain. But a good call. They picked up about half of their yardage. They're back to third and nine. They were third and 16, which is a tough tough situation to pick up a first down, but here third and nine stuff's got more of an opportunity. Reitman gets a breather. Kyle Toomer is in there now at the fullback position. And now Scott calls a timeout. So we've got a timeout. And it's Fullerton leading big 20-0 back after these messages. Back out here at Santa Ana, California, at Santa Ana Stadium, the football home of Cal State Fullerton. And right now, it's all Fullerton. They lead UNLV and Fullerton's Big West opener, 20-0 with 7.35 remaining. First half on a gorgeous day. And one of the beautiful cheerleaders on the Cal State Fullerton squad. Third and eight for UNLV at their own 32-yard line. Reitman back in, goes in motion, far side, stop to throw. That's some protection. Now he fires, incomplete. It was intended for McCardle, Terry Tramble covering on the play for the Titans, and that'll bring up a fourth and punting situation for the Rebels. Good job by the Rebel offensive line there. The Titans had a push up the middle, but they stayed their ground pretty well. Derek Scott, you can start to see a little bit of frustration in the young quarterback. Ryan gets a beauty off Pendleton backtracking at the 19-yard line. 25 crosses the 30 down at the 31-yard line. It's a 48-yard punt by Rhines, a 12-yard return. Tony Rhines, a great kicker, gets great hang time if there's any negative is that he sometimes takes that three steps before he gets rid of the ball and he's had some block. Dan Speltz at quarterback. He's had a great day. First and ten Titans at their own 31-yard line. They lead it 20-0. Pringle up the middle. And Pringle powers his way to the 40-yard line. Tony Dilley was there, helped out by Therese Roderick. Mike Pringle has such good vision. His head's always up. Watch the block by Letutupu. No, Tom Gang there coming across, but you see Mike Pringle, he, he knows where defenders are. He, he's always aware of where he is on the field, where his pursuit's coming from. Pringle, the pride of Mission Hills, California. He is a senior. Second down and one. Again, Pringle the call. And he's got first down yardage for Cal State Fullerton. The Titans are really always in a two-minute offense with the with the trips, receivers always to the right or left. But the thing with, with the Titans right now, I'm sure Dan Speltz would just like to eat this clock up, keep his, his defense off the field, and really they're wearing down this UNLV defensive unit. They've been on the field most of the afternoon. Celestine, Hill, and Palomero to the right. Seven more first downs for Fullerton thus far. 
Burns lines up as a tight end on the left side. Spelts to throw. Over the middle, Palomero again with a fine catch. And he is brought down at the UNLV 38-yard line. Watch the hands by Rocky Palomara and a great throw by Spelts. Watch him lead and throw this ball over 53. David Clark, the linebacker, not really in the play at all. Rocky Palomara, great possession receiver. But it might be called back, a penalty flag on the play as we take one more look at it. Just a super throw, but you could see the concentration of Palomara. You see him watch the ball in, not, not even concerned about the hit he's going to take. Here is the official word on the penalty. Holding. On the offense, repeat first down. So Rocky Palomera will have that one taken away as the Titans come out. He's climbing that career chart. He wants those receptions. So first down again for Cal State Fullerton at their own 32-yard line. Smeltz, good protection. Ryan for Palomero. And he goes out of bounds. He lost the ball. They uh, mark it at the 41-yard line, and Fullerton keeps possession. This is Rocky a great throw. throw. Excuse me, Jeff, by, by Dan Spelts. Watch Rocky from that inside slot back position. Both receivers will come to the inside, and you'll watch Palomero run the corner. And just a super throw by Spelts. Billy just a step behind, and again, you, you see Palomero watch the ball in. You fumble, he fumbles the ball, but gets back in. You see the hustle to get back over on the ball. Fortunately, it rolled out of bounds. 147 yards on seven catches and one touchdown. Rocky Palomero, one of the uh, top receivers, not only this season, but in Cal State Fullerton history. But the fun thing for these receivers on the Titan offense, Mark Hill, Tony Dillon, Rocky Palomero, you know, you're never out of the pass pattern because with a Dan Speltz, if you aren't the primary receiver, if that receiver's covered, Speltz has the ability to go to a second and third receiver. This time we have trips left. Now Palomera lines up like a wingback. Pringle gets the call and he is brought down immediately. In fact, lost yardage on the play. Doc Wise made the stop. Wise comes from a gigantic family. He is one of ten children. He has five brothers and four sisters. He's a P.E. major. Doc out of Los Angeles, California, 6'4", 265 pounds. Some of the scouting combines have predicted that he'd go as high as the third round in the NFL draft next year. So a great player, really quality kid. Second down, 11 for Cal State Fullerton. On play action, Spelts fires to Palomera again. Inside the 30, inside the 25, and he's down at the 23, and a penalty flag goes down, so we'll have a late hit on somebody. Tony Dilly, the man who made the stop, and we'll see who the penalty's against. Freddie Phillips is down. He's up now on the sideline, walking off. I watch the end of the play. There you see Dilly. Watch Freddie Phillips come in, take a hit to the head, and I think they're going to call Freddie Phillips 21. So we have a personal foul against UNLV. Wayne Nedley's a disciplinarian, and any time there's penalties like this, Palomero almost out of bounds. That's something Freddie Phillips, you know, it was it was a shot that he didn't have to take, and believe me, Wayne Nedley will let him know about it. So the ball is marked at the UNLV 12-yard line. Freddie Phillips shaking up, but he looks to looks like he'll be okay. Can't yell afford to lose him. Burns in motion. Now he stops. Pringle cuts back inside. He's inside the 10 down at the 8-yard line. Jody Reinel, first man to hit him for UNLV defensively. Mike Pringle. 
And the Titan quarterback, Speltz, he's had another outstanding uh, half of football, 13 of 18 for 252 yards and a couple of touchdowns. He's on pace to shatter the single-season pass completion percentage record. Came in at shooting at 67.5%, the record 55.5 by Ronnie Barber in 1987. Speltz to throw, Palomera, and he's into the end zone. Touchdown. Again, the quick out play to Rocky Palomero. Watch Palomero reach back for this ball. The ball is thrown behind him. Great concentration. Tony Dilly, with not bad coverage, breaks the plane before he before he fumbles the ball. Rocky Palomero, senior from Sunland. He is the holder for Phil Nevin, who will attempt the PAT. Eight-yard touchdown reception for Palomero. And the PAT is good. Timeout, a little over three minutes to play. Our score, Cal State Fullerton 27, UNLV nothing in Big West football from Santa Ana. There's a cutie pie enjoying college football out here in Santa Ana, California. Cal State Fullerton, 27. UNLV, nothing. Rocky Palomera has taken over the number two spot on the all-time Titan reception list. Rocky Palomera is having a big day. 171 yards, nine catches, and two touchdowns. Darren Brightman, Marvin Eastman, the deep man for UNLV. It goes over Eastman's head into the end zone for a touchback. And the Rebels will have it first and 10 from their own 20-yard line. Right now with the field position the Rebels have with about 338 left in the half, Derek Stott has to protect the ball if he can't get something going. He can't afford to throw an interception here. Wayne Nunley hoping that Derek Stott can engineer some type of a drive. Derek had not played a down for UNLV until this season. This is his third with the club. That includes one redshirt season. He's in there for the injured Chuck Price. Getting valuable experience. Wills in motion far side. Stott over the middle, and it's complete to tight end Robert Welch. And Welch powers his way to the 39-yard line. Finally brought down by Russ O'Lear. O'Lear is no small man, six feet tall, 230 pounds, out of Valsalia, California. He's the leading Titan tackler. Watch the poise on Derek Stott. He's a pocket kid. He'll take off and run, but here stands in the pocket, makes a super throw to Welch, gets the Rebels into good field position and gets something going for his offense. Out of the I formation, UNLV first and 10 from the 39-yard line, trailing 27-0 to Cal State Fullerton. Darren Brightman. And he's going outside as he brings it to the 49-yard line of Cal State Fullerton. A nice run by Darren Brightman out of San Diego. 12 yards on the run. You talk about Mike Kringle's vision. Watch Darren Brightman. Darren plays both fullback. Here they have him in the tailback position. You see him see the defense overrun the hole, does a good job of cutting back, almost gets to the outside and makes a bigger gain. But I'm sure Wayne Nunley's glad to see this running game help take some pressure off his young sophomore quarterback. Brightman's natural position is tailback, but as uh, David Hum mentioned, he also has played some fullback. 89-yard run last week against New Mexico State. The longest play from scrimmage in UNLV history, run or pass. On a delay, that's Toomer with it. And Kyle gets it out to the 46-yard line of Fullerton, and a penalty flag goes down. John Dennis had made the tackle, and we have a late flag. the officials Mike open 64 dead ball foul that'd be on Pat Harden watch the right hand of your screen number 64 Pat Harden you see him dive in right there at the very end 
Pat Harden is the player that failed the drug test That's in late ball. August. Personal foul on the offense. It will be second down. He was suspended for four weeks. He just came back on Tuesday, and so you can bet he's not in a playing shape well, at all. And except for Perez, he's the only veteran offensive lineman, and Pat Harden's got to be a leader out there, and late hits like that don't help his offense. Second down for UNLV. Tumor in motion near side. On play action, Scott rolling left under pressure, fires, and it is incomplete. Pendleton putting pressure on Ricky Wills, the intended receiver. Wills heard his footsteps and could not hold on to the pass. Well, and a great rush there by J.C. Farrow, and Derek Stott made a super throw with Farrow all over him. UNLV leading this overall series 10 games to three, although Fullerton has won the last two games. Last year in Las Vegas, 20 to 10. Two years ago, right here, 28 to 14. Fullerton leading this afternoon, 27 nothing. A little over two minutes to play until halftime. Glad you could join us here on the Prime Ticket Network. I am Jeff Witcher along with David Hum. Third and 22 and a whistle and the play is blown dead immediately. game call on Wayne Nunley's UNLV Rebels. A good throw by Derek Stott to start this series. A good run by Brightman. Third down. And then the late hit by Stop Patrick Harden. So here they had a drive going, and we'll see the penalties. One, one thing that kills you on offense, especially late hits on offense, really kill you. I'll say Fullerton, no penalties today. You know, be a roughing uh, penalty by Freddie Phillips and one by Harden. Those have really hurt both sides of the ball, offense and defense. Gene Murphy's club playing a flawless game penalty-wise. Scott under pressure. Jones after him. Fires sidearm to Welch complete, and he is hit immediately by Chapel at the 48-yard line. Short of the first down. Robert Welch out of Fullerton, California, so he's familiar with the Titans. Here Stott shows you some athletic ability, running to his left, throwing across his body. Just a good touch throw there by Stott. Third down and 22, awfully hard to pick up. Good hit by Schaffel, and a good job by Welch of holding on. Tony Ryan's able to be punt, averaging 48 a punt today, as long 51. Rocky Palomera is the deep man for the Titans. Beautiful punt by Rhines. It gets a UNLV roll, and it is down at the six-yard line. So the Titans backed up into a corner with 120 remaining until halftime. Tony Rhines, one of the fine punters in the country. Twenty-seven-nothing. Cal State Fullerton leading. The fans out enjoying the ball game and the beautiful weather here in Southern California. We'll see if the Rebels try to use any timeouts and get this ball back with 128 left. Pringle trying to get him some running room and he gets it out to the nine yard line. Aaron Christian in on the stop for UNLV. He plays the defensive left tackle for the Rebels. Very steady performer. Mike Pringle, not an easy player to bring down. I'm a little surprised that the Rebels don't use a timeout here. Darren Brightman, a good punt returner. Maybe stopping the Titan offense. They have a chance to make a big play on that punt return. Palomero, wide left. Tony Dill, wide right. Bill Brennan, the tight end for the Titans on the right side. Pringle again gets the call. Second effort gets it out to the 15-yard line. Avery Miller in on the tackle for UNLV. 30 seconds remaining until halftime. Got a timeout called. Wayne Nunley will talk it over with his uh, club. 
Fullerton is 0 for 3 on third down conversion situations and yet lead in the game 27 nothing. Don't forget next Saturday prime tickets Big West game of the week. It's two hot quarterbacks Paul Oates of Cal State Long Beach and Phil Vincent of New Mexico State. The Aggies and the 49ers will square off at Memorial Stadium in Long Beach, California, and Prime Ticket will be there to bring you all the exciting action. So that's next Saturday at noon, Cal State Long Beach and New Mexico State, right here on Prime Ticket, the world's largest regional sports network. Twenty-eight seconds showing on the clock until halftime. Wayne Nunley in his fourth year as the head coach of UNLV, his eighth with the program, and as we mentioned earlier, he also played for the Rebels. Well, and Wayne Nunley, he's got some pressure on him to win or do well in this conference race in the last year of his contract. So I'm sure a lot of things are going through Wayne's mind. Last week he won against New Mexico State, and he knew he had a tough test here against this Titan, uh, this Titan group. On the other side of the field, Gene Murphy. One win, two losses, and one tie. This is their conference opener, so he has to be delighted about the way things have gone thus far. Dan Speltz, big afternoon for the Titans QB. Gives it to Pringle outside, crosses the 20, fumbles the football out of bounds. So Fullerton retains possession, and they'll mark it at the 22-yard line. That's happened a couple of times to Fullerton. Well, Pringle is so quick. That play was designed to go between guard and the guard in the center. He broke it to the outside, got the first down. They can run the clock out now and go in with a good lead. Twelve seconds showing on the clock. Palomera wide left. Tony Dill, wide right, Pringle the lone remaining back. Pringle up the middle. Gets it out close to the 24-yard line. Gang tackled, the charge headed up by Aaron Christian. There is the gun signifying the end of the first half. Wayne Nunley has to be disappointed about things as he talks to one of his players, Joe Zachariah. The inside linebacker, and he's really John. So at halftime, our score, Gene Murphy's Cal State Fullerton Titans, 27, UNLV, nothing. Our halftime activities after this. Cal State Fullerton in their Big West opener, leading UNLV 27-0 as Fullerton trying to even their record at 2-2. Two and two. They have one tie, and UNLV comes into this one with two wins and one loss. They're 1-0 in conference play thus far. Elsewhere in college football, number one, Notre Dame demolished Purdue 40-7. Number two, Miami and Michigan State deadlocked at three in the second quarter. 21-0, Nebraska leading Oregon State third quarter. 14-3, the halftime score. Number 12, Tennessee with a surprising lead over number four, Auburn. Maryland and Michigan and Michigan won by 20 over Maryland. 21-17 as Duke upended number seven, Clemson. Washington State ranked number 19 in the nation, leading rugged USC number 11 by four in the second quarter. Alabama defeated Vanderbilt 20 to 14. In the third quarter, Oklahoma running all over Kansas 31 to six. Oklahoma ranked 16th in the nation. And that's the most offense Oklahoma's had all year. And in Major League Baseball, a big, big game for Baltimore. Seventh inning, they lead Toronto 3-1. to one. And remember, Toronto has already clinched at least a tie in the American League East. They might have to end up playing a one-game playoff to see who will win that American League East title. Well, the officials are standing at midfield. UNLV back onto the field. Boy, they have a big mountain to climb Try to get back into this ball game. Jay Trail, 27 zip. Right now, your thought, Rodney Bell, he's, he's got to be talking to his offensive unit, and he says, 
men, we can only get one at a time. And with that first one comes momentum. When I was with the Raiders and Kenny Stabler and Jim Plunkett, they were guys that were always in control. You couldn't tell when you looked at them if we were up by 10 or down by 20. And it's, you've got to get the first score. And the thing is, they've got to eliminate any, any late hits, any mistakes, any, any movement penalties, and just be disciplined and go out there, get that first score, try to just get some momentum, and then just hope it carries them through and they can have a big second half. Now, UNLV, remember, will be receiving the second half kickoff, and they're going to need to put something on the board when they get that football. Well, special teams is a great way to make make something good happen for your team. So if they could get a good return here, they're going to be going into whatever wind um, that we have today. And if you look at Derek's side, Derek doesn't have a real strong arm. There's a little bit of breeze into his face, but they need a good return, if not a big one, at least get good field position. Phil Nevin, number 10 out of Placentia, getting ready to kick off for Cal State Fullerton. Eastman and Brightman, the deep men for UNLV. 27-0, Fullerton leading. Second half underway. Eastman from the seven. Pushes Brightman down, crosses the 30, and he fights his way out to the 35-yard line. A nice return by Eastman. 28-yard return. Sean Dennis finally brought him down for Cal State Fullerton. Marvin Eastman does a good job. He, he goes to Darren Brightman. He says, Darren, get out of my way. You see him push him away. Watch the hit here. He does a good job. Good hit there by number 15, Bob Bays. But Eastman just keeps on running. Good effort. And that's the kind of effort they need from special teams. Stott and at quarterback. Wills wide left. McCardle in the slot left. Welch tied in on the right side out of the I formation. Brightman, first man through. Picks up about three yards on the play. Brought down by John Bavaro, the uh, senior out of Glendale, California. Darren Brightman coming off that 183-yard performance last weekend against New Mexico State. And he did it in just 11 carries. That is amazing. 189-yarder, the longest in Rebel history. But this kid is a leader and just a super kid. Averaging eight yards a carry for UNLV. He has not had that kind of a day, obviously, so far this afternoon. Second down for UNLV. Brightman again, cuts it back inside, crosses the 40 out to the 43, 44 yard line. Tackle made by Sean Forrestall, inside linebacker for Fullerton. This is a big third down situation for the Rebels. Third down and three. They can either run or throw here, but we need to see Derek Stott do something and get some momentum for his offensive unit. Doral Randall is in there. They've got a double tight end set. A power formation. Eastman, Brightman, and Kyle Toomer all in the backfield. Eastman almost tripped himself up but he crosses the 45 to the 46-yard line, and that is a first down for UNLV. Very big third down play, and they were successful. And it was a long, short yardage situation. It was third and a little more than two. Watch Eastman. His foot catches in the turf, and he almost goes down behind the line of scrimmage, but does a good job of getting over the line there and getting the first down. Wills wide left. Again, Keenan McCardle in the slot left side. Split back behind Derek Stunt, the sophomore quarterback. In there for the starter, Chuck Price, who's out with a finger injury. Toomer. Toomer spins his way to the 48-yard line of Cal State Fullerton. Schaffel in on the tackle, along with Dave Dort. Kyle Toomer out of Los Angeles, 6'1", 220-pound, a senior. He also comes from a big family, one of seven children. He's got three brothers and three sisters. UNLV on the opening drive of the second half, down 27 to nothing. Second down and four from the 49-yard line of Cal State Fullerton. Darren Brightman and Clarence Seiler just throws him back to midfield. It looks like Nunley's going right back to the basics that he's going to try to establish his running game, but 
it's kind of like the old Oklahoma wishbone. It's hard to make up a lot of yardage and make up a lot of points keeping the ball on the ground. Clarence Seiler makes a nice play. He wants to be a sports agent when he finishes up his schooling. With the money there is in sports now, a very intelligent young man. Kyle Toomer and Brightman split backs. Welch in motion near side. Stop to throw. Pretty good protection. Now he's under pressure, and he fires it as he's being hit. It goes down. Incomplete. Of course, the uh, Fullerton fans wanted an, an intentional grounding call. They didn't get it. No, that was a good play by Stott. John Bavaro, pressure on him. He didn't throw the interception, protected the ball, but watch the poise this young man has. He does a good job of standing in the pocket. He recognizes the rush, tries to buy some time, but you can see there he's hit when he's trying to throw by John Bavaro. Punning situation, Tony Rhines into the ball game for UNLV, Rocky Palomera, again the deep man for Fullerton. Booming punt off the foot of Rhines. Were they able to touch it down before it goes into the end zone? Yes. Ho! Oh, that's on about the two-inch line. So Cal State Fullerton will be right on their goal line as UNLV got a great bounce and was able to down it. Take one watch more the, look. Watch the bounce. The ball will go directly to the left. A good job there of the Rebel players not knocking the ball in. Kyle Toomer there, you see, trying to swat it back. You have to be careful there. You see his left arm on the goal line, but great kick. And you wonder if that would have happened on artificial turf. So Fullerton, they've got 99 yards to go for a score, but they lead it big back after this. Cal State Fullerton, 27, UNLV nothing. We're in the third quarter. Just under 12 minutes remaining. Spelts, big day, 14 of 19, 260 yards and three touchdowns. Right now wants to get out of that end zone and get some running room and he just keeps the football and spelts moving up the titans all-time passing chart he is now third behind allen and barber with 3114 yards and with the offense they run now and as much as they put the ball up, up it's likely that he will pass damon allen of course remember his opening game he was 37 of 50 setting the school records in both attempts and completions against Northern Illinois. Pringle cuts back inside. There goes somebody's helmet on the Titans. Play Tutu Fu lost his helmet. And Pringle gets it past the five-yard line. Gives them some breathing room. Lay out Le Tutu Fu. Watch this helmet go flying. At first I thought this was a fumble, but this thing goes about 25 yards. Le Tutufu 79, you see there his helmet just shoots out, almost goes out of bounds. He's big, 6'2", 300-pounder, a senior. Third down play for uh, the Titans, and right now they're one of four on third down conversion. Big play for the Rebel defense here to get good field position. Pringle, he's hit, breaks one tackle, and finally is dropped. At the four-yard line, as the pursuit was great by John Foster, who brought him down. Foster out of Sacramento, California. Fine senior season for Foster. You see 39, Avery Miller in there, put the first hit on Pringle, but you see Pringle's strength, good pursuit by Foster. A great job for the Rebel defensive team to, to get this ball back and give the Rebels chance a good field position. Nevin, standing back on the back line of the end zone. He gets it off. Wills from the 47-yard line. And he is brought down immediately at about the 43 or 44-yard line. J.C. Furrow made the uh, tackle for Cal State Fullerton. Nevin, a 42-yard punt. And a four-yard return for Wills. Nevin, just a little bit off, but that's understandable. He had a real bad case of the flu and was unable to practice all week long. UNLV in good field position. Stop to throw. 
complete to McCardle, and McCardle gets it out to the 32-yard line, brought down by Chris Wright. Nugent Pendleton was also over there for Cal State Fullerton. That time the Rebels showed an, a different look. They split tight end Robert Welch out, tried to spread the defense. Good job of getting the ball to McCardle. Good field position. This is a drive that they need to come away with points. Give their young quarterback confidence and get just get their guys fired up. Derek Stott has a good touch on the ball, and he has showed a pretty good poise so far for UNLV. Out of the I formation. Brightman. Brightman inside the 30. J.C. Farrow in on the stop for Cal State Fullerton. Jeff, this is a time also when you want your offense to get in and out of the huddle a little bit quicker. The Rebels are just kind of walking around. You know, they're, they're just kind of taking their time. The clock is running. Every time you run the ball, as you look at Gene Murphy and Wayne Nunley, Gene's got to be real happy. Wayne, I'm sure, is going, let's get something going. But they've got to, they've got to speed up their between-the-plays huddles. Second down for UNLV. Whiteman again. Whiteman inside the 25-yard line, down at the 23. Sean Dennis was there to make the stop for the Titans. The intensity level hasn't dropped off at all. Here you see the block just outside. A lot of intensity, but the thing is to run the ball all the time, that clock just keeps on running. Seven minutes, 40 seconds remaining, third quarter, third and one. Another big play for UNLV. They've got that power formation with the three backs behind Stott, Marvin Eastman. And he pings his way inside the 20. First down, UNLV. Marvin Eastman, 5'10", 212-pound junior out of Merced, California. They've seen a weakness on the left side of that Titan defense on short yardage. They've run this every time. Schaffel does a good job of coming up and wrapping Eastman, but that would have been a big play if he could have gotten away from the tackle of Mike Schaffel. Six more first downs in the game for Cal State Fullerton. Reitman. Reitman is inside the 15-yard line, down at the 14-yard line. Reitman now with 42 yards on the game. Remember, he had 183 last weekend against New Mexico State, and his partner, Eastman, had 125. Against a little bit different quality defense in, in New Mexico State. This is a, a defensive team that doesn't do a lot of blitzing, stays in their lanes, but has a, a probably a little bit better athletes than New Mexico State. Wills wide left, McCardle in the slot left. Robert Welch, the tight end on the right side. Toomer and Brightman, Kyle Toomer, the ball carrier, trying to get outside. Loses the ball out of bounds and they'll spot it at the four-yard line where UNLV will have a first and goal. First and goal, UNLV at Cal State Fullerton's four-yard line. We'll see if we can see Ricky Wills come up and get a block on 87. Watch 87, Clarence Seiler, and out of the right of your screen, Ricky Wills, the wide receiver, cracks back. I'm sure that's not a sight he likes to see, that, that defensive end coming out, but did a good job of getting a piece of him. Kyle Toomer gets a breather. Marvin Eastman. Toomer and Brightman in that power formation. First and goal from the four. Brightman gets the call, and Russ O'Lear wraps him up and puts him down at the four-yard line, right back at the line of scrimmage. Great play by Russ O'Lear of Cal State Fullerton. Watch O'Lear, good push by the left side of the Rebel offensive line. You see O'Lear come in behind it, does a good job. Darren Brightman, so short, always has the leverage, but O'Lear shows his strength there. So UNLV in their longest drive of the ball game. This is the eighth play coming up. Russ O'Lear, he was a JC All-American out of College of the Sequoias. Schumer. Breaks a tackle, rolls into the end zone, touchdown UNLV, and give all the credit.
it to Toomer, a great individual effort. John Bavaro had Toomer wrapped up early. He broke that tackle. Harold Jones, who had such a big first half, had another shot at Toomer, and Toomer just ran right through him. Watch Bavaro. You can see how strong Toomer's legs are. But watch Harold Jones come up and make a hit, but just can't wrap him. Good job of spinning out and getting that first touchdown. Toomer, the most powerful back on the UNLV squad, comes up with his first touchdown as a Rebel. Luis Salerio, who's had problems with PATs, puts it up. It's good. We've got a timeout with 6.39 remaining third quarter. The score now, Cal State Fullerton 27, UNLV 7. Attention Southern California. If you're even thinking about buying a used car or truck, check out Harbor Hyundai South Coast Dodge Suzu Pujo in Costa Mesa. Last month, we met the challenge by giving you the best deals possible and breaking new car sales records. That means that now we've got a great selection of trade-ins that we have to clear off our lots this weekend. Domestics, imports, cars, trucks. We'll do anything to meet our used car challenge. So hurry to Harbor Hyundai South Coast Dodge Suzu Pujo in Costa Mesa. No dealers or wholesalers, please. For over a year now, you've seen ads for a fantastic product called Stainmaster Carpet. Now, if you're even considering new carpet, Carpet Man puts it within your budget. Carpet Man now has DuPont certified Stainmaster Carpet made by Evans & Black, a division of Armstrong, for a special TV price of $8.49 per square yard. Not $14.99, $8.49 per square yard. So come by and see us at our San Bernardino store on E Street below Orange Show Road or call 888-1487. Nobody beats the Carpet Man. So UNLV, their best drive of the game, it took eight plays to travel 43 yards in three minutes and 53 seconds, and Toomer capped it with a powerful four-yard run, breaking a couple of tackles on his way to the end zone, and it's now 27 to 7. Luis Solario set the kickoff. Mike Pringle is deep. Solario, who had missed a PAT last week and had two blocks, so that one a moment ago is a big one. Taken by the up man of the Titans. And he crosses the 41-yard line. Sean Dennis, the ball carrier for Cal State Fullerton. Jeff, that shows you the impact a player like Mike Pringle has on all facets of the game. Here we are in the special teams. The Rebels were afraid to kick deep to him. Here they have great field position on their own 42-yard line. Here come the Titans. Pringle, the lone remaining back. Celestine, Hill, and Palomera to the left side. Palomera lined up like a wing back on the left. First and 10 for the Titans at their own 41-yard line. Dan Speltz, big day for the quarterback. And he's throwing long, intended for J.J. Celestine, and it's incomplete. Gerald Robinson, right side cornerback for UNLV, covering on the play, and he was there stride for stride. Well, it shows you that Fullerton isn't just going to sit back and say, we have this game under control. Let's go ahead and keep trying to keep things going. Let's get another score and try to put it away. Try to take away whatever momentum the Rebels got from that last score. Gene Murphy making sure that his club doesn't let down now. There's still plenty of time remaining. They lead by 20. Second and 10, and a fumble on the snap. And let's see who ends up with the football. UNLV says they got it. Jack Gatto unpiling players, still no official ruling. Covers the football. Joe Zachariah, the man of the hour, he recovered the fumble on the snap Thanks, from center. Good job. Good job, everybody. Jeff, we talked about somebody stepping to the front and making a big play. There's a big pile here. We'll see if we can see where the fumble is. Last week, this same thing happened in the game we did against San Diego State, where they had the fumble. Pringle had the fumble on the snap exchange. That's so frustrating for a quarterback. You work on it all the time. This is a mistake on Pringle's part, on Speltz's part, I'm sorry. Okay, UNLV with the football in good field position. Derek Stott 
out of the I formation. Schumer, the first man through, and his forward progress is the 39-yard line, and that's where they'll bring it back to. John Bavaro made the stop for Cal State Fullerton. Again, good field position for the Rebels, just like they had on their last drive, about 43 yards out. If they can score here, all of a sudden they go, we're back in this game and we have a chance. Just under five minutes to play, third quarter. Cal State Fullerton leading UNLV 27-7. Ball's at the Titan 39-yard line. Second down for UNLV. Eight yards to go for a first down. Split backs behind Scott on play action. Swings it out to Brightman. Brightman bursts to speed. He's down at the 35-yard line. Brought down by Seiler and Darrell Bruce, who came up from his defensive back position to help Seiler. But what a great effort by Clarence Seiler. Seiler, six foot four and 240. The play action fake inside, trying to hold the linebackers. But watch Seiler come from the right of your screen and run Darren Brightman down. A good job by Seiler, good effort. You wonder how Seiler can do it? I'll tell you why. He runs a consistent four five in the 40. Four minutes left, third quarter, third and three for UNLV. Another big third down play. Schumer, and he's upended right at the 35-yard line. Nice job defensively by the Titans, Sean Dennis, the rover back for Fullerton. Sean Dennis is only 5'10", 180. Kyle Toomer is 6'1", 220. That's a matchup the Rebels think that they'll win, but watch this hit by Dennis, a great job of wrapping up the much bigger tumor. We've got timeout here in Santa Ana. A little over three minutes to play, third quarter. Cal State Fullerton holding on to a 27-7 lead of UNLV. Want to remind you, tomorrow the fur will fly in the Rose Bowl as the California Golden Bears battle the Bruins of UCLA. Exclusive coverage of this Grizzly matchup begins at 9.30 p.m. right here on Prime Ticket, the world's largest regional sports network, a conference game for the Bruins. Terry Donahue disappointed that they were not able to hold on and win against Michigan, but they'll see what they can do against Cal. Should be a good one. Still on a conference matchup. It's such a disappointing game against Michigan. Fourth down, and UNLV is going to go for it. They've got to get down to the 32-yard line. You see if Stott just tries to draw him off sides, he might try to do that with his cadence. Eastman goes in motion. Reitman, the ball carrier. He's inside the 30. He's got the first down and then some. A big, big play for Wayne Nunley's UNLV Rebels. Mike Chappell made the play on Brightman. Well, and a great block by Marvin Eastman. Watch Marvin Eastman on the left of your screen. Gets a great block there. And Chris Wright, on Chris Wright, Mike Chappell has to come up. Big call, big play. Ball is on the Titans 26 yard line. First and 10 for UNLV. On the move here in the latter stages of the third quarter, trailing Fullerton 27 to 7. Out of the I formation, Derek Stott gives it to Eastman. Some room up the middle, and he gets down close to the 20 yard line. He was stacked up there by Bavaro and Seiler. But again, running the ball on the ground and using the clock, I think you can see Derek Stock getting a little more confidence in his in his throwing ability. Be interesting to see when the Rebels do start to put it up in the air. Kyle Toomer in, Marvin Eastman out for Wayne Nunley's ball club. Second and four for UNLV. Two minutes and 20 seconds remaining third quarter. Toomer. Gets a couple of yards before he's upended at the 18-yard line. John Forrestal credited with the tackle for Fullerton. Third down and short, third down and one. I think you'll see the Rebels, they're down into four-down territory, that if they don't get the first down here, they'll go for it again. Two minutes remaining here in the third quarter. Doral Randall, junior tight end, into the ball game for Wayne Nunley. Jeff Witcher along with David Hum coming to you from the Santa Ana Bowl. Third and one for UNLV. 
Eastman. And he's inside the 15-yard line, and they've got another first down. Good job by the right side of that Rebel offensive line. And again, another good drive for the Rebels. They, they ended the first half with a good drive. They, they had a penalty that took them out of that drive and any scoring possibilities. But here, this is the second consistent and strong scoring drive the Rebels have had this half. Wayne Nunley, a lot happier about the way his team is playing here in the third quarter, but they still have a lot to make up, down by 20 points. Minute 19 remaining third quarter. The pitch goes to Brightman, and he's trying to walk the tightrope on the near side, and he goes out of bounds at the 13-yard line. Well, and Sean Forstall forced him out of bounds. But with the score here, they're, they're getting closer. They're getting some momentum. But do they have the ability to open up and really go ahead and catch the Titans? Gene Murphy is hoping no. But Gene knows that the Rebels, that Derek Stott's a young quarterback and that the Rebels don't really have a pass offense that with their offensive line, if they can't protect Stott, can they really consistently throw the ball and beat him? Wills and McCardle wide left, split backs behind Stott. A little over a minute to play, third quarter. Pass is caught by McCardle, and he's inside the 10-yard line. Out of bounds at the 9, Terry Tramble covering and made the tackle on Keenan McCardle. And a good throw by Derek Stott. This is a long throw, throwing across his body. McCardle makes a good catch. But again, another third down situation. McCardle, 43 yards, five catches coming in. He averaged 11 and one half yards a catch. His long this year, 35. His career long, 38. Four of 13 on third down conversions is UNLV. 30 seconds left, third quarter, 27 to seven. Fullerton leading UNLV. Tumor, a first to speed, second effort, and he's inside the five, down at the three yard line, and it's a first down for UNLV, first and goal. 16 seconds showing on the clock here in the third quarter. Well, Kyle Tumor just got his first touchdown in that last drive, and you can see the second effort that he made there, but he did get the first down. We'll see if the Rebels try to run another play with 16 seconds left here in the third quarter. But they do have a first down inside the five-yard line. Derek Stott signaling he wants a timeout. The referee, Jack Gatto, looked at him like, why would you want a timeout now, son? But he said, okay, if you want it, you got it. Well, that has to show the inexperience of young Derek Stott, only a redshirt sophomore, his first start. With five seconds left in the third quarter, you're down by 20 points. You can just, the clock is going to stop when they move the chains, but then it will restart, and they can either run run a play, have a chance to get in the huddle and run a play, or you can just let the clock run out and change, change into the field. Don't forget Monday, the USC Trojans travel to Pullman where they hope to continue their winning ways against the Cougars of Washington State. Exclusive coverage begins at 9.30 p.m. right here on Prime Ticket, the world's largest regional sports network. And you can't say enough about the job that Larry Smith has done since going over to USC from Arizona. But a tough game today at Washington State. Tough place to play. I bet they're going crazy up there. When I played with the Raiders, I know one of the things that John Madden and Tom Flores always said whether it be the first the first quarter, second quarter, wherever you were early in, the, in your halves, first or second half, was don't burn a timeout. Go ahead and take a five-yard penalty. Go ahead and find out what the situation is. But we want to try to have our full complement of timeouts at the end of the first half and at the end of the game. And to just burn a timeout like that really does kill you. We don't know that it'll come down, but just the fact that you know you've got them at the end of those halves. Well, Derek Stutt learning on every series, and he just learned an invaluable lesson there. I'm sure the coaches said something to him and will say uh, more to him during next week when they look at game films and go over such things. That's why they say that experience is invaluable and there's no substitute for it. Stott in there for the injured number one quarterback, Chuck Price. Tommy Jackson, their number one running back, also out with an injury. First and goal from the three-yard line for UNLV. They've got that power formation with three running backs. 
on the bootleg action. Scott all along scores the touchdown. A beautifully executed play, and they fooled Cal State Fullerton all the way. Well, I myself was watching Kyle Toomer get a block, and I'll tell you, great ball handling by Derek Stott, scoring his first touchdown. All of their power formations on short yardage, they've run off tackle. That time they faked it, the run. You'll see there isn't a Titan in the picture. Derek Stott has good speed for a quarterback, but there is just an easy walk in. So Stott scores the touchdown. And Luis Solerio will attempt the PAT. He made the first one, and he makes the second one. So the end of the third quarter, we get ready for the final 15 minutes. Our score, 27-14, Cal State Fullerton. And closer, they're trailing Fullerton, 27-14, as we begin the fourth quarter of play. That Titan defense has, has spent most of the third quarter on the field. It's a warm day. There's, there's a breeze up here, but down on the field, it's very warm. Gene Murphy trying to find a way to turn around the momentum the Rebels have gotten with their last two scoring drives. Luis Solario ready to put the foot into it, and he does so. Pringle from his own four-yard line looking for the way. Up across the 25 to the 26-yard line where Fullerton will have it first and 10. You could see the Rebel special teams, their kick coverage team there, how excited they were, the, the, the good hit, and that they're pumped up. So you're kind of looking at Cal State Fullerton. They're going, what do we need to do to get the momentum back? They had the game in control at halftime, but they kind of let it slip away, and sometimes it's hard to get your momentum back. Speltz has three wide receivers to the right side. Pringle, the lone remaining back. On play action, Speltz is going to run with the football, and he's out to the 31-yard line. Brought down there by Derek Nicholson and Doc Wise. Well, our quarter notes, time of possession, look at that. UNLV dominated the third quarter. UNLV rushed for 75 yards compared to four for Fullerton. UNLV one timeout left. And the scoreboard, 27-14, Fullerton. Even the cheerleaders have lost their smiles. Spelts to Pringle, trying to get outside. He gets away from Roderick and then is out of bounds, pushed out of bounds by Carlton Johnson. Tyrese. Roderick had him and lost him. Pringle is so strong. Roderick went around a couple times, but Pringle shows his strength. Watch the speed. He gets outside of his pulling guard. Number 79, Latutufu. And there you see Roderick has him, spins him around. He gets free again. Carlton Johnson has to come over and put the stop on him. Great athlete. Got a third down and three. Pringle 78 yards on 18 carries. Remember, he has three straight 100-yard efforts. Spelts under pressure, complete to Palomera, and Palomera dives to the 30, or to the 43-yard line. Freddie Phillips covering on the play for UNLV. The, base, the Titans have had this play their way all day. Again, a good throw, Palomera, super throw by Dan Spelts. Third down and three, pick up an easy first down. 10 catches, 181 yards, two touchdowns for Rocky Palomera. Palomera was second team all-conference last season. Trips left, Spelts to throw, swings it to Pringle, 45, and he gets out to the 49-yard line. Pushed out of bounds by Roderick. The Titans going back to the success they had in the first quarter where they, they just kind of pick at your defense. They try to take whatever they can underneath and then just hope their players, their great players like Pringle and Palomera can break the play for a long game. Second down for Cal State Fullerton at the 49-yard line. Hill, Y 
wide right. Palomar in the slot left. Celestine is wide left. Pringle, the ball carrier, got blocking ahead of him, and he's inside the UNLV 45-yard line down at the 44. Jody Reinl, the first Rebel to hit him. Good block by Le Tutufu on Avery Miller. Again, just the trap. With these big offensive linemen for the Titans, they aren't afraid to pull them. And there you see Mike, Mike Pringle just get outside, Tom Gang out in front, and good play by Reinhold. But the Titans, they've got a big offensive line, but they're sure not afraid to get those guys running east and west. 13-29 remaining in this Big West game. Fullerton leading 27-14. Pringle, the lone remaining back. Palomero moves over out of the wingback position. Speltz looking for Palomero. Great diving catch at the UNLV 41-yard line. He's got a great pair of hands indeed. And good coverage by Freddie Phillips. Again, just the short out. Palomero on the wingback position. Good throw down and away by Dan Speltz. The only guy that's going to get this is Palomero, but look at all hands. It does a good job of getting his hands under to let that official know that he has the ball. Look at him lay out. Great this time we've got trips left, Palomera, Hill, and Celestine. Second down. Pringle gets the call up the middle and has pretty good yardage out to the UNLV 35-yard line. Jody Reinl made the stop again for UNLV. That's no surprise. Reinl was the defensive player of the year for UNLV last season. Well, and this is a good drive for Dan Speltz in his offense. It keeps his defense off the field here as it gets hotter in the afternoon, and it also takes some of the momentum away from the, from the Rebels. Double tight end set. Burns tight end on the left side. Brennan on the right side. Palomero wide left. Hill wide right. And now we've got a timeout called by Dan Speltz. Just under 12 minutes left in this Big West game. Fullerton leading UNLV 27 to 14. We're back here at the Santa Ana Bowl. Jeff Witcher along with David Hum. Our location atop the press box on the western side of the stadium on a beautiful day here in Southern California. Or a nice pliable roof there that hasn't blown off yet. <laughs> Titan fans on hand watching their ball club leading UNLV 27-14, fourth quarter of play. Here's a big third down play for the Titans. Pringle rolls off a man, great second effort, and very close to a first down. Very, very close. It will depend on the spot, and we'll probably see the chain gang come out. He takes a big hit from Avery Miller here, and then John on, Foster again tries to wrap him up. Gene Murphy standing on the first down marker in front of the Titan bench. Pringle with a great second effort, and he got the first down. First down, Cal State Fullerton. Watch this effort by Mike Pringle. He takes a shot from Avery Miller behind the line of scrimmage, spins away from him. John Foster again gets the first down easily. They called the first down. Now they're bringing the chain gang out to make sure they made the correct call. He looked like he was more than a half a yard. You see him spin out of the hit by Avery Miller. Also a big hit by Tyrese Roderick on him also. So Pringle has carried the ball 21 times for 94 yards, so he's six yards shy of his fourth straight 100-yard game. Well, in, in his all-purpose yards, he's at 240 yards a game, but the Rebels have not kicked to him today when they've kicked off. Speltz sends Palomera Hill to the left side. Burns a wing back on the left side. Pringle in the backfield all by himself. Speltz, good protection. Fires for Burns, incomplete. Therese Roderick covering on the play for UNLV. There's just a little drop off in talent when Tim Burns is in that, that wing back position as opposed to Rocky Palomero. That time Palomero wasn't in the, in the offense. 
Tim Burns running from the position that Palomero usually runs from. Burns is a local product out of Fullerton, 5'11", 218 pound, a senior. His dad, Tom, is the commissioner of the state CIF. So he knows all about the athletic life. Trips left for Cal State Fullerton on second down. Spelts again to throw. Firing for Hill and he overshoots him. The crowd on the Fullerton side wants pass interference, figuring that Odegaard knocked Hill down. No call. We'll see if this is interference. You'll see Dan Odegaard, Mark Hill, has him somewhat beaten. We'll see if the ball is catchable, but Odegaard will get his feet mixed up with Mark Hill. And it's hard to see in our monitor that that ball was uncatchable, that the official might have just waved, not a catchable ball. And I think that's what it was. Celestine wide left. Three of seven on third down conversion is Fullerton today. Belts to Hill, and he does not hold on at the 26-yard line. And that ball certainly looked catchable. Don Odegaard covering. We mentioned that Odegaard sat out last year after transferring from Pac-10 school, Oregon State. He had a problem with uh, Dave Cragthorpe's coaching staff and left the school. Usually, if you're not playing, you have a problem with your coaching staff and you go someplace you have an opportunity to. I don't know that they would have gotten the first down there, but Dan Spelt showed that he's got how, just how strong his arm is. Nevin is in to punt. Bill would more than likely try a pooch punt. Wills is deep for UNLV. We've got a whistle down on the field. Delay of game on Fullerton. Dead ball, delay, offense, fourth down. It just gives him a little bit more room to punt for that corner or if he's going to pooch the ball. Murphy walking up and down the Fullerton sideline across the way on the eastern side here at Santa Ana Stadium. There's the bounce, and it takes a Fullerton bounce, and it's down at the seven-yard line. However, a penalty flag back at midfield pulled everything. Well, this is about as big a mistake as you, as you can make. They, they roughed Nevin there, the Rebel uh, rush team. It'll give the Titans the ball back and take any kind of momentum that the Rebels have. We'll watch it again. Phil Nevin, good rush by the Titans, but I think they're going to call the Rebels number 24, Rodney Crozier, on roughing Nevin. 15 yards first down. Let's get a ball. ball play. That has to be as demoralizing as anything that can happen. Your offense has been playing well here in the second half. They didn't in the first half, but they came back. Derek Scott was starting to get things going. The running game. Foul. Roughing the kicker. First down. That's a mental mistake, especially if you're not rushing 10 men. If you're just rushing and trying to hold up and get a return, and then you go in and rough the punter and give them the ball in good field position, it just almost takes you out of the game. So Dan Speltz and the Titans have the football at the UNLV 24-yard line. Just under 11 minutes left in this football game, 27 to 14, Fullerton leading. Pringle trying to get outside and he can't get away from Freddie Phillips who makes the tackle at the 20-yard line. Again, that counter trap play that the Titans run so well and let Mike Pringle get back in and read his blockers. Watch number 79, let Le Tutufu get in front of him. Pringle just reads the block, breaks outside, shows great speed. Freddie Phillips does a good job of coming up and making the open field tackle. Second down and five for the Titans at the UNLV 20-yard line. Pringle again. Jody Reinel brings him down at the 18-yard line, a pickup of two. 
Mike Pringle off tackle. Right now, those offensive linemen for the Titans are saying, let's just run the ball and go get after him. Good tackle there by Jody Reinhold. Tony Dill, Hill, and Palomera trips left. Burns the tight end on the right side, and Pringle the lone remaining back. On third down, Speltz to throw. Fires over the middle to Dill, and he's upended at the six or seven yard line. Good for a Titan first down. Watch Mark Hill number seven. They're looking to go to the corner to Mark Hill. Watch Hill there in the middle of your screen. He's going to run the corner. You see the pick there on Odegaard. Dill comes underneath and watch right in the middle. Jody Reinhold just waiting for him. That's tough. Those receivers are kind of splitting where they're looking at the ball and they know they're going to take a big hit there in the middle. First and goal for Cal State Fullerton. Pringle. And he doesn't get anything. In fact, he may have lost yardage on the play. Doc Wise wrapped him up and put him down in a hurry. Well, Doc Wise had 18 tackles last week against New Mexico State. We haven't called his name a lot today. Watch on the right side of your screen there. Good hit on Pringle. That's how you've got to get him before he can get any momentum going. Doc Wise, honorable mention, All-American, first team, All-Big West, fourth year starter. He has a chance to play in the National Football League. Second down and goal on play action. Spelts in trouble, fires to the end zone, and it's a touchdown to tight end Bill Brennan. Big Bill Brennan, all 6'6", 245 at the back of the end zone, just reached up, used that height to his advantage for another Titan score. And Dan Speltz shows the maturity he's gained over the last two years. Watch Speltz get hit as he throws. He throws it where only his receiver can get it, just over Tyrese Roderick, and a great throw and catch. Bill Brennan caught the first touchdown pass last weekend for the Titans against San Diego State, and he catches one today. In fact, his first collegiate catch was a touchdown at Tulsa in 1986. Nevin's PAT is good. Timeout on the field with over eight minutes remaining. It's now 34 to 14, Cal State Fullerton. Cal State Fullerton's Phil Nevin getting set to kick off after the touchdown. It's felt to tight end Bill Brennan. 34 to 14, our score. Eastman has trouble with the handle, picks it up, and gets past the 20, 25, and he's out to the 30-yard line, and we have a penalty flag down. Jeff, we talked that special teams could get you back in the game, and special teams really is what has taken the Rebels out of it. And a clipping call against UNLV. That last scoring drive for the Titans, 16 plays. They traveled 74 yards. They ate up over six minutes on the clock, and Speltz capped it, hitting Brennan on an eight-yard scoring strike. 8.35 left in this game. During the run back, first down. The roughing the punter call that kept the Fullerton drive alive, and they went down and scored a touchdown here. They get a chance to come back. A clipping penalty that puts him back further with an offense and a young quarterback that is really in trouble right now. We'll see if they open it up. They're 20 points down with over eight minutes remaining. Derek Stott, the quarterback, he's a sophomore, in there for the injured Chuck Price, if you joined us late. Stott to throw, and he hits McCardle, nice juke, and he gets about three or four extra yards out of the play, Keenan McCardle. Keenan, a possession-type receiver, brought down by Chris Wright. But good hands and good moves, and he makes a great play there. He made, he made Wright miss. The Rebels now need to get in and out of the huddle. Stott. This is a chance for him to establish himself and really give him a chance that when Chuck Price comes back, that it's his job. First down at the 23-yard line for UNLV. Out of the I formation, Darren Brightman and Marvin Eastman. Brightman, first man through, gets the call. 
and he dives out to the 27, 28 yard line. Brought down there by Harold Jones. Seven minutes and 51 seconds remaining in the football game. Kyle Toomer into the game for UNLV, replacing Darren Brightman. Jeff Witcher along with David Hum. Hope you're enjoying this college football action on a Saturday afternoon on Prime Ticket from Santa Ana, California. Stock, pretty good protection. He's going to run with the football. He's got good speed. Over the 30 and really hit and upended by Darrell Bruce at the 32 yard line. Woo! Call it Tim McMahon in Super Bowl Hole against New England. You know, this never happened to me because I really didn't run it up the field that much. I knew I knew to get rid of the, the people that to have the job of catching it. Watch this hit that he takes. Good block by Wills. And just a good job by Stott just to get up. Watch the hit again. 360. Daryl Bruce has great speed. 4.45 in the 40. And he really upended Stott on that last play. Here's a third down for UNLV. Brightman. And he is down at the 32-yard line. Charlie. Uh, Chris Wright made the stop. Chris Wright, the senior out of Anaheim. And I don't think he's going to have the first time down. That time the Rebels had the two back set and they ran away and did not have a lead blocker in front of Brightman. So it'll be fourth down again. Whereas with time running out, they have no choice but to go for it. Here's that power offense used in short yardage situation. Eastman, the ball carrier, and he gets very close to the 35-yard line, and that would be good for a first down for UNLV. Well, they were successful again going off tackle, and I was watching the backside, and there was still no Titan defender that adjusted to the rollout that Derek Stott could have. So we'll see if they don't try to run that again if they get in that situation, the fourth down is short. Dave Dorff eventually made the tackle for the Titans. UNLV has a first down at the 34-yard line. UNLV out of the I formation. Play action. Stott to McCardle, and he can't hold on at midfield. Gerald Bruce was there. And McCardle shaken up, getting up slowly. Mike Schaffel also is there for Cal State Fullerton. This ball floated just a little bit. It's a post pattern. As you and see Keenan McCardle, either an ankle for a knee as he limps off, but Daryl Bruce did a good job of stripping the ball away from Keenan McCardle. We'll watch Derek Stott, this ball just floats. You've got to throw it on the line. Watch Bruce, he just comes over the top, and Mike Schaffel just comes in and puts a hit on both of them. Daryl Bruce might have taken the worst part of that hit. Well, it's a shame that they lose their top receiver right here. They have had more than their share of injuries. McCardle today, 53 yards on a half dozen catches, and he has hurt himself and has to leave, and I doubt we'll see him the rest of the game. Andre Gidry is in there at wide receiver. Run up for grabs, and no one can get it. It falls to the natural turf, incomplete. Terry Tramble thought he should have caught it. He's real mad at himself. It was intended for Ricky Wills of UNLV. This is one that quarterbacks, they like to throw the little tighter spiral. This one was a little more end over end, but Terry Tramble intercept. There's the wounded duck. That would be an example of one of those on the highlights. But Terry Tramble, an interception in the first half on a play similar to that. Well, glad to report Keenan McCardle has shaken off the injury and he's back out there. And he is sent wide to the right. So McCardle, not 100%. But he's a gutty character, and he's in there for UNLV. Scott again to throw, and on the fake, on the double pump to Brightman, but the Titans are not cool. Cal State Fullerton defense that play beautifully. 
J.C. Furrow made the stop for Cal State Fullerton. Well, in 46, Gary Thornton, he'll, he'll force the play back to the middle. Watch Thornton. He gets up the field, and he forces the play back in the middle. Good job by that defense. Tony Rines is in there to punt from the 20-yard line. Palomera deep for Cal State Fullerton. Palomera signaling a fair catch, and then he drops the ball. They're going to whistle a dead at the 25-yard line. Just under five minutes left in this game, and Fullerton leading big over UNLV. Jeff Witcher along with David Hum back out here at Santa Ana Stadium, a Big West ball game, first of the season for Fullerton, second for UNLV, and Fullerton leads by 20 points with four minutes and 44 seconds left in the game. Dan Speltz, the QB of the Titans, and what a job he has done today for Gene Murphy. Ball's at the 25-yard line, first and 10 for the Titans. This is a time that the Titan offense can have a little bit of fun. They can get Pringle his 100-yard game again to keep that consecutive string going. Rocky Palomara is one uh, catch away from tying the school record uh, by Todd White in 1987 with 12 catches against the same UNLV team. 183 yards for Palomara and two touchdowns. So that gives him four touchdowns on the season. and 12 in his Fullerton career. Gene Murphy wondering about the delay. Now they're going to put more uh, Seconds on the clock to 4-5-1. And they're going to run that play again because of an inadvertent whistle. Interesting call. So there's four minutes and 51 seconds left in the game. UNLV and Tony Rines will try it again. Low snap. Rines gets it away. Palomera calls for a fair catch. So they get a couple of yards out of it as he makes the catch at the 27-yard line. Murphy says, well, we had to go through a lot to pick up two yards. Gene Murphy's got to feel pretty good about his team today. Wayne Nunley you really have to give him credit for getting this team up with the number of injuries that they've had to their offensive line. Chuck Price, they lost him, Tommy Jackson. And his offense has had spurts where they've done pretty well, but again, mistakes have killed them. First down for the Titans at their own 27-yard line. Double tight end set. Pringle up the middle. Good second effort. Gets it out to the 30-yard line. Of course, Wayne Nunley has been taking some heat back home in Las Vegas, Nevada. Of course, uh, head coaches, when they don't win every week, they take heat. Well, and in Las Vegas, which is it's a tough town for anybody to play, and, and you've got to have a winner there. You know, they, 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 he is in the last year of his contract, and there is some problems that if he does not contend for the championship and to lose your second conference game or your second game in the conference to have your first loss, it's tough to come back and win it. So Wayne's got a, an uphill battle to fight. Pringle again. Pringle across the 35. A penalty flag is thrown at the 31-yard line. Carlton Johnson made the tackle for UNLV. Three minutes and 59 seconds left. Here is the official ruling. Holding against Cal State Fullerton. The Titans have not been penalized that many times this afternoon, and it's one of the, the big reasons that they've got the lead they've got. Holding, offense, repeat second down. 
So the penalty takes the ball back to the Fullerton 20 yard line where they will repeat second down. And Pringle has done it again, his fourth straight 100 yard effort. Carried the ball 25 times thus far. Make that 26 as he powers his way out to the 24 yard line. In on the stop for UNLV. Andy Christian. But you see that he never stops his second effort. One thing Gene Murphy says about Mike Pringle is sometimes when you lose, you'll, you'll remember it on Sunday and remember it on Monday. He says this kid never forgets. Very intense competitor. He was not satisfied at all last weekend when they tied San Diego State 41-41. He's that intense. If the team doesn't win, he doesn't care about his individual stats. And you love to have that kind of a player on your team. Pringle again. And he gets it out to the 28-yard line. Great kid to have on your team. And really the concept that the Titans have this year with the three wide outs. And usually you go with your strength. If you got one great wide uh, wide receiver you'll run the pro set and it hopefully have two good backs but with Pringle they've got so many weapons they can really spread the ball around and you've got a quarterback like Dan Spelts that's really matured this year on fourth down Nevin in to punt at the 15 yard line Rick Wills is deep for UNLV not a very good punt off of Nevin's foot Wills from the 43 yard line reverses his field He's to midfield, 40, 35, cuts it back, and he's down at the 27-yard line. What a beautiful punt return by Ricky Wills. A great effort. Gerald Bruce finally upended him. He never stops. Watch number 39, Kevin Koontz of the Titans. You see the shot there at the bottom of the screen that he takes, but watch Wills' great effort. He reverses his field. Makes a good run. This is what Wayne Nunley likes to see is that his players aren't quitting. They're, they're close to being out of the game if they aren't out of it, and Wills would make some effort like this. Nice tackle by Daryl Bruce to come back. 29-yard punt by Nevin, a 30-yard return by Will. Scott, play action. Firing for the end zone. Keenan McCardle, touchdown, UNLV. Second touchdown catch for Keenan McCardle this season. And the Rebels have scored again. And Derek Stott probably took the best hit of his young career. Watch Stott come back. He's trying to go to his fight. He'll go back to his other receiver. He took a big hit right there. But a great catch by McCardle and a good job of keeping his feet in bounds. And the pain of that hit will go away when he finds out that McCardle scored the touchdown. You can always tell by the crowd noise when you're down. So UNLV with 157 remaining will go for a two-point conversion. There's a mix-up as to who should be in the lineup and who should not. So Derek Stott uses up a timeout. One more time, though. The confusion and burning your timeouts just kills you. Because in a situation like this, you know if you're going to go for a two-point conversion during the week, you practice your two, what play you're going to run in the two-point conversion, but we'll see the touchdown again. Watch Derek Stott on the play-action pass. He drops back. He's got plenty of time here, but there at the end, he really took a hit, and this is a super throw in the back line and a good job of McCardle being aware of what's he, where he was in the end zone. Unofficially, we have that as UNLV's final timeout. Derek Stott talking things over. The UNLV fans that have made the trip, and there's a lot of uh, young men from Southern California here, so that is correct. No timeouts remaining for UNLV. Derek Stott, 12 of 22 today, 132 yards, one touchdown. He's been sacked three times, and he's been picked off one time. And he could have had more sacks. He's done a good job of moving around in the pocket and getting rid of the ball. But one of the major mistakes he made was at the end of the third quarter with five seconds left, he took a timeout and burned one there. And then here again, the confusion in getting their team in for the two-point conversion. 
57 left in the game. UNLV going for two points. On the option of fake, nobody fooled. Chris Wright puts Stock down and then has a few words to say to him. Chris Wright not fooled at all on the play action. Remember, Stott scored earlier on the bootleg, but watch Chris Wright. He jumps up, tries to get rid of the ball, but just a picture book tackle by Chris Wright. Watch it again. Those hits for a quarterback are no fun. So we've got 157 left in the game. The score now, Fullerton 34, UNLV 20. 34-20, Cal State Fullerton leading UNLV in Big West Conference football here on Prime Ticket. The onside kick didn't travel far enough. It's got to travel 10 yards. Good job by Rick Brown there in the in the middle of that Titan um, return uh, team and did a good job of not letting the ball go the 10 yards. So Fullerton will have the football at the UNLV 42 yard line, first and 10. Anthony Reese in at wide receiver to the right side. Pringle gets the ball, gets it out to the 41 yard line. I think we'll see the Titans just run that same play, run Pringle up the middle every time, let the clock run out. The Rebels use their timeouts, can't stop it. 135, 134, 133 as the clock runs here at Santa Ana Stadium. Cal State Fullerton about to even their record at two and two with one tie, but this is their first conference game, so they'll be undefeated in Big West play. Anthony Reese, wide right. Pringle again up the middle. Gets it inside the 40-yard line. Mike Pringle, fourth straight week with 100 yards or more. Under a minute to play. There's the clock. On third down plays, the Titans have converted four of ten. Pringle. Pringle gets it out to the 35-yard line, short of the first down. You can see the Rebels. They, they are depressed. They, they knew they came into this game with a lot of players injured. An inexperienced offensive line, a new starting quarterback. Their defense thought they could play well, but their defense is really geared against the run. And here the Titans, they're a passing team, and Dan Spelt's had a wonderful day. Clock ticking away. Five. Ball game is over. Two. One. And the gun sounds. And Gene Murphy and Cal State Fullerton win their Big West opener as they romp over UNLV. We'll be back right after these messages. Next week, on the road, the Utah State. Okay, you too. All right, Dad, you too. Good job. Okay. Back out here at Santa Ana Stadium where Cal State Fullerton upends UNLV 34 to 20. They led 27 nothing at halftime. UNLV played much better in the second half but just had too much to overcome as they fall to one and one in Big West play. Cal State Fullerton is one and oh. Number 16, Dan Speltz, the quarterback for Cal State Fullerton is our prime ticket player of the game. And David Hum, he had a dent. Oh, he had a super game. He, he basically, the ball control offense that he ran in the first half, he made some great throws. You see his stats there, 19 of 28, 297 yards and four touchdowns. Just a super day in a, in a fun offense to play in and a fun offense for us to watch. Okay, so Dan Speltz, the prime ticket player of the game. 
and the final stats of this ball game show four more first downs for Fullerton. Total yards, 412 for the Titans, 269 for UNLV. Passing-wise, 297, quite an advantage for Fullerton. And rushing-wise, UNLV had a slight edge, 136 to 115. Two turnovers for Fullerton, one for the uh, Rebels, and the time of possession, ironically, went to UNLV, but it didn't do them much good. And that doesn't show up in the one-loss record, and I think Wayne Nunley is disappointed in that 136 yards rushing after the week that, uh, that they had last, last week against New Mexico State. No doubt about it, because he had two men over 100 yards. Brightman at 183 against New Mexico State and Marvin Eastman at 125. So the final score once again, Cal State Fullerton 34, UNLV 20. My thanks to David Hum, my spotter Jeff Nathanson, and my statistician Mike Sexton. That's going to do it for Prime Ticket's Big West Game of the Week. Prime Ticket has presented the Big West Game of the Week, brought to you by Isuzu, the first car builders of Japan. Isuzu, by Great Western's family of companies with over $35 billion in assets, 100 years strong, Great Western will always be there. By Coors, brewery fresh, pure and natural, it's a true American original. And by Toyota, whatever car or truck you choose, you'll love the quality. Who could ask for anything more? For David Hum, this is Jeff Witcher bidding all of you a very pleasant good afternoon.